We're going to get started here with Roger Huerta in just a moment. If you have any questions, please press the raise hand button. We are now being joined by Roger Huerta. We'll begin with a few questions from the media joining us virtually today. Keith, your line is now live. Hey, Roger, it's Keith Schilling from Sherdog. Sure How you doing, man? Doing all right, brother. How you doing? Excellent. Uh, first question I want to ask you is, you know, since your last fight, what would you say the biggest improvements you've made so we see the best Roger Huerta in the cage? Mm, well... I had a lot going on before my last fight, and even in that fight, you can kind of see I fought like an amateur. Um, I definitely did not display any of my skills uh, that I know that I possess, and I definitely these last well ever since. I mean, I've just been putting in a lot of I've been putting in a lot of work, so I'm ready to go. You'll you'll see that this Friday night. Excellent. Well, what do you think about your opponent, Chris Gonzalez? He's a young prospect. He's undefeated. What do you, what do you, how do you feel you guys match up against each other? Uh, I believe he's a good grappler. That's kind of what I've seen. Um, I don't really see a lot of other danger, really, that he can possess. Uh, um, I mean, he does strike here and there, but other than that, I mean, I think he's still, you know, up and coming. But, he, man, he's, he's facing a veteran, a, a guy who's seen a lot of things in this world and in this life and in this cage. So I'm definitely going to, you know, display that and put them away. Yeah, my last question to you, you've fought all over the world and, you know, pretty much all the top organizations, Bellator, one championship, UFC. What would you say you like best about Bellator compared to those other top organizations? What I like best about Bellator, they are able to kind of understand the fighters to see what they're going through outside of the cage and kind of let them deal with the, what they got to deal with. And I'm, I'm blessed that uh, they've, uh, they've been patient with me. So thank you. Nate. Oh, yes, sir. Roger. How are you doing? Doing all right yourself. I'm doing well, man. Thank you. Uh, my question is just, we haven't seen you in the cage since November of 2019. Uh, I know you had some injury issues, but with a layoff like that, do you enjoy kind of, you know, having more time to work on your game and, and coming off of a better performance or do you just get anxious and you kind of want to be in the cage as much as possible? Well, I was ready to get back in there, but then I, I ended up having another injury right before that, that fight that I had to pull out. And I'm usually not, not one to do so, but uh, it was, it was major. So I had to get surgery on my shoulder. Um, I actually flew to Barcelona to go get it done just because some of the doctors here in, in the States uh, did not want to do it the way I kind of wanted to get it done. And I went out of, you know, anyways, out of pocket, went over there and got it done. So I'm here, here to do, I'm here to play now. Awesome, man. And then my next question is just, you're coming in as a, a plus 210 underdog. Do you kind of put any weight on those things or with a veteran like yourself with all those credentials? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Come on. Anybody that knows me, I'm, the, I'm, I'm one of the toughest persons in this world. Come on, let's go. Donna? Hey, uh, Roger. Um, the Bellator rankings were just announced. Um, do you think that a win here will will get you uh, will get you back into to, to contention to be in, in that that top ten um, lightweight ranking? 
man, I'm here after the belt. I'm, I'm, that's why I'm here. I'm still playing this game because I want to be a world champion. That is the only reason why I'm still playing this game. So if, if it puts me out there real quick, sure, why not? But uh, I'm, I'm coming after these guys, man. Is there sort of a, a, a new fire within you to, to, to get that done? There's no, you know, there's you could no conceive fire, man. It's just one of those things that I've always had in me. It's just, I got off my path as a competitor, as a fighter, and I'm, I'm here, man. I'm here doing. You could conceivably fight uh, maybe three times this year in, in Bellator, should you want to. It looks I'll, like... I'll be on call, man. After this fight, I'll be, I'll be waiting by the phone. I'll be on call. How many fights are you away from the title, do you think? Up to Bellator, man. It's not, not, not up to me. Thank you. Tony? Hi, Roger. I hope you're well. Doing all right. Just wanted to get your, your thoughts. Obviously, this is the, the first fight for you during the pandemic era. How, how has that played a part in any training in, in the lead up to this fight? Man, we all have obstacles in life. And if you want something, you're going to find ways to get around and, and get what you want. So I pushed through it. I'm here now. And and just last question, just going into this fight, obviously, you know, you, you're coming off of three back-to-back losses. Does does that give you sort of more motivation to win this win this fight? Or, you know, how, how does it change your approach? Doesn't change nothing. So, like I said before, the last fight I wasn't all there. Even before that, I mean, I went head to head with Patricky. I'm um, sorry, this is the brother. Yeah, Patricky. And I mean, I almost put him away until he. When when do you see that guy going for takedowns? So, come on, James. Hi, Roger. This is James from Strictly MMA. Um, my one question for you is, do you have a prediction for how Roger Huerta gets it done this Friday night? No, man, I can't tell the future, but I'm definitely coming after this guy. Absolutely. And then my one other question, this is kind of from a fan perspective, but I grew up watching you fight, my brother as well. And uh, I remember watching your Leonard Garcia fight, and that's still ranked as one of the best lightweight fights of all time. I mean, from your impressive career, where does that rank for you? Well, hmm. a lot happened after that fight because we ended up getting on the cover of Sports Illustrated. So it was good for the sport. It was good for myself. It was good for, for many things, but uh, it wasn't for a world title. So I can't say that it, it you know, it's, I'm going after a world title here. Simon. Hey, Roger, uh, I just have one question for you today. Simon from Behind the Grind. Uh, your last three outings have been against some of Bellator's toughest in the lightweight uh, division. So what do you need to do in order to get back to your winning ways come Friday night? I got to stay focused, man. Stay, stay in my lane, stay focused, keep my eye on the prize, and that's to be a world champion. Matthew? How's it going, Roger? This is Matthew Potter from, from MyMMAnews.com. How you doing, Mike? Hey, my first, my question is, you, you know, what motivates you more, coming off a loss or coming off a win from a fighter's perspective? Mm, at this point, life itself motivates me, man. There's a lot of uncertain things. There's a lot of uncertain things out there, and and just being here, this is an opportunity for for me and for all the, all these guys. So um, I'm here where. I'm here to take full advantage of this opportunity. That's all I got for you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Max? Hi, Roger. I'm Max from MMA Pit, and I got two questions for you. So you've been here for a while. You fought MMA royalty. You're in this three-fight losing streak. Does it really affect you at this point of your career or just another day at the office? Just another day at the office, man. Going to go have a cup of coffee. And my other question is, uh, we know you, you've got your tough times in Mexico. So what would you say to those, to those people that are coming, maybe those uh, difficult situations in their lives? Can you say that again, please? Uh, we know you've had your tough times in the past in Mexico. So what would you say to, to those people that are maybe having those tough times in their lives, maybe? Hang in there, man. Hang in there. All right, we have time for a couple more here. Chris? Hey, 
Hey, Roger. Chris Mancuso, TarpsOffSports.com. How are you, man? Quick question for you here. I just have one. When you're coming in to a fight like this versus Gonzalez, a guy who only has five professional fights, do you find it more difficult to game plan for a guy like this than opposed to the other veterans of the sport? Or, or is it just next man up mentality? Next man up. That's pretty much it. I mean, this guy's come here to fight. I'm not here to wrestle, so... As far as a fighter, I'm I'm the best fighter here. Awesome, man. Thank you. Colin? Hey, Roger. How are we doing? Doing all right yourself. Good. Quick question. Is there any specific grappling, grappling focus uh, in this training camp? No, not necessarily, man. I come from a wrestling background. That's when I started this game. But I'm a full-time fighter, so this, this, I'm here to fight. Last question for you. With Chris Gonzalez being only five fights in, but undefeated is there a extra excitement there to be to give him his first loss not at all i'm just he's just in my way for what i'm what i'm going after i don't see anything else just he's just in the way last one here zach hi roger my name is zach from mma island and you fought all over the world but if you had to fight in rome in the coliseum gladius style what would your weapon of choice be and why <laughs> uh i'm in it man i got him right here We'll take one last question here from Dylan Bowker. Dylan, go ahead. Hey there, Roger. How's it going? I'm kind of wondering because your opponent coming up here has the, I guess, reference of training with Clay Guida, who obviously you had that legendary fight with years back. Like, what are your thoughts on that kind of dynamic, just in the sense of like these new guys you're facing, it kind of drudges up almost these old, dynamics from like over a decade ago like how does that dynamic make you feel it's nothing man uh, i saw clay's last fight he did well still the same old clay um, not a lot of improvements just uh he pressures in good cardio tough as nails but uh i'm here to display some skills man um I, again I, yeah i've been all over the world i've seen a lot of things and i mean it's it's nothing a fight's a fight Clay ain't going to be in there, not his teammates, not no one. No one's going to be in there, just him and myself. That's it. He is in there with me, no one else. All right. Thanks for the time, Roger. Appreciate it. Thank you. God bless all. Up next, we have Roger, sorry, Roman Feraldo.
All right, we are now being joined by Roman Feraldo. We'll begin with a few questions from the media. Keith Schillen, your line is now live. Hey, Roman, Keith Schillen from SureDog. How you doing, man? How you doing, Keith? Uh, excellent. Uh, so my first question I got to ask you, you had an incredible performance in your Bellator debut, but despite that, do you feel even more comfortable now that you're used to the routine of how, you know, how things are done in Bellator? Uh, definitely, man. It, now it just feels like, uh, like you said, just routine. Walking back in, you know, going through the checks, going through quarantine, you know, it, it, it's definitely more familiar. And, uh, you know, even going to the back room, getting in the locker room, getting warm, cutting the weight. It's just another, you know, another, another fight week. Now, your opponent's six foot seven. Have you ever faced anybody in any kind of athletic competition, you know, combat related? In, in in the practice room, anything that, that kind of help you get prepared for someone like that? Um, well, I feel like he's actually like five six with a two foot head, but uh, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, I I'm I'm blessed. You know, American top team. We got a lot of uh, superior athletes there. We got a lot of guys that are rangy six five six six, not quite six seven, but you know, I believe that are more athletic, more well rounded, and that I've had the opportunity to train with. So I feel like I'm more the you know more than enough prepared for this for this uh, opponent and opportunity. Yeah, but you, you mentioned six foot seven guys. I mean, is it sparring with heavyweights? Is that what you have to do? Uh, not quite heavyweights, but a lot of middleweights, a lot of light heavyweights, you know, big bodies getting used to it, you know, so I don't think this guy has anything that uh, I won't be prepared for. As we mentioned, your, your last fight, you look spectacular, but obviously you still want to make improvements. What improvements can we see from that last fight to this one? Uh, just uh, honestly, just a, a more well-rounded fighter in uh, every aspect, you know. Um, I think you'll be able to see, uh, you know, a variety of, uh, uh, of, my, of my skills in this fight. I'm definitely going to mix it up, um, you know, just work all my skills, be able to show all my techniques. And uh, I mean, not all of them, keep some secret for the next fight, but uh, definitely show how, how I improved and uh, definitely get another highlight real knockout. Jim? Yeah, Jim Varsimo, Miami Herald. Thank you, Roman. Curious about, thank you. Curious how the training went for you. What has it been like? What is just the people you're working with? Did Jorge Masvidal get involved with this one at all with you in relationship there with him and just how all that went? Uh, well, camp's been amazing. You know, um, I'm in, you know, quoting my coaches, I'm in the best shape of my life right now. Um, I've put in more rounds than I have in any other camp. Um, you know, working with some of the best guys uh, in the world. You know, I got a, I got, they just, Bellator just let out their, their top roster, working with guys like Johnny Evelyn, Austin Van Ford, you know, Dalton Rasta, uh, my dude, the sleek sheet, uh, Sabat. You know, I got, I got a lot of bodies. I got my dude Jocko over in the UFC middleweights. Uh, you know, I got a lot of bodies that I've been working with, good top wrestlers, good strikers, just well-versed at mixed martial artists, um, you know, uh, quoting on George. George is getting ready for his fight, so he's been more game planning for his and, you know, uh, working more towards the wrestling, so I haven't I have the ability to work with him as much as I would like, but, you know, all in all, you know, we have we have a game plan that we're going to go and uh, uh, put forth on Friday, man, and I look forward to, uh, again, just putting on another highlight reel and uh, adding, adding to the win column. And lastly, for me, who is with you for this fight? Who will be in your corner for this one? Uh, I got my my cousin Juan Carlos Ferraldo. He's he's been with me uh, uh, for the last three years. You know, as my strength and conditioning coach, and as uh, one of my you know my grappling coaches. Um, and I got my man Mauricio, who uh, is my jujitsu coach that we work with and uh, helps me with uh, you know just keeping my mind right. Anything I really need, he helps me with. So. Uh, uh, sad to say, I didn't. I didn't have the opportunity to bring my striking coach up there. He has, you know, he's again, Paulino Hernandez helping George get ready for his uh, championship fight coming up on the 24th. So, which is, you know, awesome. I'm, I'm really looking forward to being there for him. But I'm more than prepared, and uh, my corner is definitely. I got. I know. I, I have, you know, trust and belief in my corner that we'll get. We'll get the job done. Donna. Hey, uh, Roman. 
This guy obviously won pretty spectacularly last time out. Uh, what did you see in that fight that, that concerns you? And, and, and what do you see uh, as, as flaws in his game? Uh, you know, I see, uh, yeah, he had, he had a good knockout. I seen the knockout more as a mistake on Gracie's part than uh, Goody being than Goody being more efficient than anything. Um, Goody's a long guy. He, 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 puts, he puts good pressure on guys and... Uh, you know, you see, you see his size. He, he tries to implement the size, and and uh, a lot of guys. It affects a lot of dudes. Uh, I think I'm a little different. You know, size really doesn't affect me. At the end of the day, I'm a dog. I got a big dog in me. I got a lot of fighter, a lot of fire in me. And uh, at the end of the day, I'm gonna bring it, man. So, if he's not prepared for for a real war, then uh, I don't see him. I don't see him making it out of the first round. I think you know him being the character he is, being the guy you know of his of his caliber. I see him making it out of the first round, but other than that, uh, I'm going to break him. I'm going to break him, and uh, I'm going to finish him. What do you think is going to happen when uh, when your friend Jorge Masvidal gets his rematch with the full camp against uh, Kamara Usman next month? You know, that's a, I, if, if I being totally honest, I think he's going to same thing, man. I, in the first in the first fight, I seen Kamara, uh, you know, working a game plan that was very smart and tactical. Press him up against the cage, wear him out. You know, the guy had six days' notice, so he wasn't on a full camp. He, you know, he fought he fought that fight smart. You know, wore him down, got him tired, took away the one aspect of the fight that George would win, his striking took, you know. And uh, I just don't see it going the same way. I see George coming out and, uh, you know, being a lot more uh, calm and assertive with his game plan, using his striking. You know, his wrestling is top-notch. People don't – people underestimate that about him. Um but uh, I see George. I see George finishing the fight, man. I got I got George finishing the fight probably in the third or fourth round. James McDonough. Hi, Roman. James here from Strictly MMA. Thanks for taking time to talk to us. Of course, my man. Thank you. Absolutely. So you got four wins now. You got four knockouts. You had three knockouts in your amateur career. Is that the game plan, man? Going here, shut some more lights off this weekend. Always. That's always a game plan. My game plan is always to finish. You know. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to finish, uh, submit anybody yet, you know, not, but uh, yeah, always, the game plan is always a finish. I go out there to finish fights. Uh, I, I do not like leaving it in the judges' hands. Um, you know, my, I like to say my greatest weapons are my hands. So if I can implement them, I'm going to. Uh, but definitely not in a rush, man. I look forward to going out here, you know, taking my time, really working, you know, using the cage, working my, working my, uh, my setups and my techniques, breaking this guy down really, really showcasing my skills. And um, when the finish presents itself, then I'll take it. Awesome. And last thing for me is just um, this car should be doing pretty good reviews. A lot of people watching. If you're talking to your fans right now, why should they be tuning in and watching Roman fight this weekend? You should be tuning in to watch spectacular violence and, you know, beautiful brutality. You're going to watch a guy get in there with me and watch him watch him submit to his superior it's going to be it's going to be a spectacular uh, event and uh beyond me it's it you know you also have pitbull versus uh was it sanchez that's going to be a great fight as well i'm looking forward to watching that and uh but yeah definitely definitely for my fans i'm um, adding another highlight reel to the uh to the role tony hi roman hope, hope you're well how you doing brother i'm good thanks um there's a lot of headlines coming into this fight about you being the protege of, of Jorge, Jorge Masvidal. Obviously, you know, given the similarities with, with the flying knee knockout, do you, do you take that as sort of additional pressure or is that, a com you know, the biggest compliment to you? Uh, I, I, take, I take it fully as a compliment. Um, you know, again, just bringing it back to Paulino, I got to give all the props to our striking coach, Paulino Hernandez. You know, without him, uh, nothing on George. I don't think George would be where he is and... Without Paulino, I wouldn't be where I am. So, you know, given given the props, if the props go to anybody, it goes to Paulino. And, uh, you know, yeah, just hearing that, oh, you know, the knee, the spectacular knee knockout, it's like George's, uh, you know, it's flattering. And, you know, it just means that I'm doing my job right. So. And and obviously, the, you know, the last few fights have, have gone extremely well. Have you actually had the time in in a real fight scenario to actually learn, or you know, is there is there things that you've critiqued out of your performances? 
Definitely. I mean, um, I, I'm my biggest critic when it comes to watching my fights, rewatching. I, I watch my fights as if I was my opponent. You know, what what things would I be looking for? Um, how how could I, what can I expose on myself? How, you know, where are the holes in my game? And, um, you know, just, just because I win doesn't mean that there's nothing I can, there's not something I can improve on there. And uh, definitely in the fights, you're always looking to, you know, you can study a guy as much as you want, but, you know, a guy's never the same dude from one fight to another. So I go into every fight, you know, with an open mind, willing to adapt. We have a game plan, but you always have to, you have to, to, you have to have the ability to adapt and, uh, you know, be willing to be willing to step into the fire. And, you know, that's that's the great thing about the fight game, man. It, it really can be a flip of a coin. Santiago. Hi, Roman. Greetings from Amsterdam and thank you for the time, brother. My man, how you doing? <laughs> In your, I'm doing very well. Thank you so much. In your last fight, you really put a beating on your opponent and you ended it with a beautiful knee in the second round. Is that something that you and also Jorge Masvidal train a lot on to end fights in a spectacular fashion? Well, I mean, if you listen to any uh, of George's uh, recent interviews, you know, his mindset changed a couple years ago after his trips uh, to, uh, I think it was the Dominican Republic. And, uh, you know, he had a mindset where he's, he's just going to finish guys. And, um, not, you know, that's always been my that's always been my game plan. Go out there and finish the fight, man. I don't I don't want to I don't want somebody to watch the fight and have a different perspective than me and think that I lost the fight because they seen something or they watched it from a different angle. I'm going out there to finish the fight. So there's so there's no, you know, debate. And um, that's always been my game plan. I go out there and on top of it, too, I go out there to to uh, put on a show, man. I don't, I don't, I don't want to leave it to the judges. I don't want you to leave watching the fight saying, "Damn, I, you know, I wish there would have been, I wish there would have been more action, or, you know, he could have fought better, could have did this." I'm going out there to finish, put on a show, and uh, again showcase my skills. Austin Fender, Ford, Cody Law, Johnny Eblen, yourself. Some special things are happening at ATT. That gym is making big time noise in the world of combat sports. How important is the ATT team for you and for your preparation to a fight? Huge, man. It's drastic. You know, I, I've been there now for six months and um, it has been tremendous in my career. I've seen tremendous growth in all aspects of my game and um, a big part also, not only have I seen growth, but it has give, given me a tremendous amount of reassurance in my own abilities and my skills. So, and like you said, you know, ATT right now is on the map. We had, I mean, we've been, on, ATT has been on the map for years. They've been uh, top school in the world for, you know, for the last decade. But um, I think, you know, in this past year, we've seen uh, a camaraderie come together. You know, everybody's working with everybody. Everybody's trying to grow and, uh, you know, no secrets everybody's just open man and, and it's been it's been again it's been tremendous for me and it's been tremendous for my for my uh my career and and my skills and my ability and uh yeah man it's 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 awesome i love i love doing what i do and it's it's amazing when you get to go to a place like that you know that's my job that's my place of business that's my place of work and you want to be there and i want to be there every day it's 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 surreal we have time for a couple more here simon Simon Romero behind the grind. Mr. Roman Feraldo, how are you today, my friends? I'm feeling like a million bucks, bro. I'm feeling like a champ, ready to go. Awesome, awesome. That's what I like to hear. So you are on a 10-fight win streak since your amateur days. What have you done uh, in training specifically to keep that streak alive? Uh, you know, staying humble, man. Always looking to improve. You know, there's there's never a time in my and there's never a time where I'm complacent in my abilities. Uh always looking to improve, always willing to get better, you know, trying to be the best guy in the gym. You know, my dude Dalton gave me, Dalton Rasta, he, he gave me some advice. He's like, you know, you want to be the best in the world, you got to start at the gym, you got to be the best in the gym. So looking to be the best in the gym, you know, always pushing myself, always trying to grab information, work with the guys that I see are doing it at the top of the game, you know, like George, you know, I had, I've had, I was blessed for this camp to be able to work with Mike Brown a, a, a lot more than usual, you know, um, just trying to pick these guys' minds and, you know, they have countless, countless years in the game. And it's like, uh, it's surreal. And I've, again, I've seen tremendous improvement in my game, just, just staying humble and always trying to improve, never, never being content, never settling where, where I'm at with my abilities. So. My second question for you is what do you do to keep that beard looking so fresh and so clean? You know, uh, I think it's just genetics, man. Uh, I'm blessed. 
<laughs> Super blessed. Uh, you know, last time I got to rock the stash a little bit, I had to put on for the fam. My uh, my papa Ralph, he, he used to rock the, the pinner. So, you know, a little, little tribute to him, but letting the beard grow out, you know, stay strong. I trimmed a little too much for this fight. I wanted to be a little thicker, get that Viking look. But, uh, you know, I think it, I think it'll be it's nice and full right now. So I think it'll, I think it'll look good after I knock this dude out. Chris. Hey, Roman, Chris from TarpsoftSports.com. I got to say, as a beard guy, man, you're looking fresh as hell. You look ready to go. Um, I want to ask, though, you know, Bellator has the ranking system now. You've got one fight under your belt. I know the the fight itself is something that is uh, incentive for you to get up and do it. But, you know, com- it's a camaraderie business as well, right? The, are you motivated by by getting your name into the rankings? Uh, you know, uh Definitely, you know, it, it's it's really cool to see your name up there when it is up there, but that's not, you know, that's not my main objective. My, you know, my ultimate goal is to become a world champion. Um, and, uh, you know, I obviously realize you got to go through there. You got to slowly work your way up. So I look forward to seeing my name on the top 10 list and then working its way down the numbers, you know, up until I'm number one contender and to where inevitably I'm world champion. And, uh, yeah. So it's def- it's definitely something to look forward to and uh, strive to strive to get on. You know, it's it's pretty cool when you see your name in the top of the world with you know the guy the best in the world. Yeah, man, absolutely. And the last thing I have for you here, we talked about George, we talked about American Top Team. We've all seen the craziness that is the Jake Paul and Ben Askren. Are you sitting on the same side of the fence as George? Are are you taking Jake Paul? I, I mean, come on here. I know you guys are buddies, but but but, but, but level with me here. You know, uh, nothing for another. I think it's a uh, you know it, that that's a that's a spectacle that people want to watch it. People like to see the show. Um, inevitably, uh, I, I really don't have too much to say about it. The guys, uh, I'm not too big on uh, on all the the you know the talk and talk and talk and running the mouth. You know, I just I say what I'm gonna do and then I go and do it. I feel like Jake. Uh, Jake's going to Jake's gonna go out there, and I think, per my personal opinion, Jake's a better boxer than Ben. I think Jake will put the, put the hands on, hands on uh, Ben. But, uh, you know, that, that's my opinion on it. I think Jake just needs to just calm it down a little bit, go, go do his job, and call it a day. But, again, that, that's the show, man. It's, it's show people want to see it, and uh, that's it. Last one here, Colin. Roman, Colin's MMA World. How we doing? I'm doing great, man. How are you? Good. 10, 10 fight win streak. I know you're not looking past your next opponent, but what's next for you? Do you see anything down the road? Do you see big fights? Maybe Definitely. a different promotion? Um, so I, in, in, in all honesty, man, I love Bellator. This, the, in the past, these two fights, they've treated me tremendously. Everything has gone smooth. I haven't had to, you know, if they needed something, they've contacted me. It's been different for me with other promotions. It's, you know, so um, I'm loving it here, man. Um, I got, after this fight, I have two more fights on my contract. So right now, what I'm, my, obviously my concern is Friday. After that, you know, we'll look to the future, but um, definitely looking to finish out my contract with Bellator. Uh, again, too, I'm, I'm loving it here. And, uh, you know, we'll see what the future holds, man. You know, I plan on finishing my contract 7 and 0, 7 KOs. So we know when the renegotiation comes by, you know, we'll be looking for some bigger fights and, and uh, some bigger paydays. Great. Thanks for the time, Roman. Good luck on Friday. Thank you, guys. Uh, appreciate you guys, man. Next up is Mandel Nalo.
We are now being joined by Mandel Nalo. We'll begin with a few questions from the media. Keith Schillen, your line is now live. Hey, Mandel, it's Keith Schillen from SureDog. How you doing, man? Good. How are you doing, Keith? Um, excellent. Thanks for asking. Uh, my first question is your last fight was a no contest against Sayyid Awad. Uh, was he offered to you in, in a fight? No, that fight never came back. But uh, I know there was a bit of talk about it in the week following that fight. But I don't know. The, the buzz kind of died down, and it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. You don't, you don't know really what happened with that? No, I guess like scheduling and whatever just didn't work out. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, you were originally supposed to face Keone. Now you're facing Ricardo. Uh, what was the biggest change in opponent? Like anything you had to prepare differently? Yeah, you know, like one guy was a lefty, one guy's a righty. So there's a big difference there. But outside of that, you know, training for a fight is training for a fight. You got to, you know, spar, condition, roll. It's all pretty much the same. My last question to you. I, I, I watched your last interview after your last fight. You said you just want to make big improvements between fights. So that said, what is going to be the big improvements that we see? Uh, yeah, just an overall technical uh, level up. You know, treat, if you're treating your career or life like an RPG, let's just say, uh, you know, I got a bunch of experience and I'm leveled up. Max? Hi, I'm Max Morales from MMA Pit. And, you know, you, you in your own words, you said that that fight before Sawad's fight, so, so something uh, crazy happened now in this Sawad's fight, that no contest. So are you looking forward to change that, that page on fight day or that or that page was changed at the first day of fight camp? Uh, no, I think what sticks out in people's minds is your most recent fight because people who watch fights don't don't see training. So, uh, yeah, of course, I would like to remedy the, that taste in people's mouth of me having weird fights. Matthew? Hey, how's it going, Mandel? This is Matthew Puttermere from My MMA News. How you doing? Good, how are you? Hey, doing well, man. Hey, my first, my first question I have for you is, like, why should we believe that you're the next big thing in MMA today from MMA reporters' standpoint? I mean, you don't have to <laughs> but, uh, just watch me fight, I guess. Like, it doesn't really matter. There's prospects that pl that uh, play out and then there's prospects that don't work out. So I, I guess I'm one of those guys that's still a question mark. Um, in my eyes, I believe in myself and that's all I really care about. So you don't have to if you don't want to. <laughs> that's all I got for you, brother. Thank you. Jack? Hi, this is uh, Jack Juana from Knockdown News. Um, after your quick low blow fight, um, was it important to you to get back in the cage, um, you know, very quickly? Because you usually have that pace of, you know, one fight a year. The, <laughs> the one fight a year is not by design. It's, uh, it just ends up happening. But uh, so it wasn't necessarily the fact that the fight was so strange uh, that made me get back in here quicker. It just uh, worked out finally. Harry? Hey, Mandel. Harry Mack from the Bookies Basement. I hope all is well. I hope all is well with you as well, Harry. Thank you. So I just wanted to ask, on Tapology, your official nickname is listed as Rat Garbage. So I just wanted to know, where, where does that come from? Uh, it's a long story, but uh, it's my, the short story is it's my Instagram handle. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, thank you very much, Mandel. Best of luck. No problem. Thanks. James? I know mean, this is James from Strictly MMA, and um, I know people keep bringing up your activity. It seems to be a constant thing at the press conferences, but this is the second time we're seeing you in just about six months. Is it safe to say 2021 could be the year of Mandel Nalo? This is the one. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, that's the plan, and uh, let's hope everything uh, keeps going well. Absolutely. And then your opponent, Ricardo. Um, he seems to have the ability to finish it, whether it's standing or it's on the ground. You also have the ability to finish it, whether it's standing or on the ground. But looking at him, watching his past fights and getting ready for him on the short notice, is there a particular uh, situation where you want to keep this fight? No, not really. I think uh, if you're a fighter, you kind of expect it to happen everywhere. Um, obviously, there's like a loose game plan. So 
But, you know, it, it doesn't really matter where, where stuff. You just look out for what the other guys could add and fight your fight. Nate? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I would like to piggyback off of the rat garbage question. We haven't seen a post on the rat garbage Instagram since May of 2020. Have you still been creating artwork and when can we expect rat garbage's return? I have uh, been creating artwork. I just haven't been posting it. I don't know why. Uh, the next, so yeah, uh, maybe I'll release an NFT or something. I've got some merch, but I don't sell it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm still making stuff. I'm just, I don't, I don't know why I stopped posting. I got bored or something. Thank you, sir. Donna. Hey, uh, Mandel, how's it going? Good. How are you? I'm okay. Um, talk to me about the lack of fans and how that impacts your performance and, and to, to keep it all within one, the one question, do you think that Bellator should start now with the States opening up and, you know, with, with the bubble as secure as it is, maybe starting to let a few fans back? Yeah. As far as the second part of the question, I don't really know. That's their business. Uh, and the first part of the question, it really, does, as far as the fight itself doesn't matter at all. Um, but I'll say like post fight, having your friends there is pretty cool. So that, that's the one thing that it changes. How do you find uh, life in the, the bubble? It's boring, <laughs> but I don't know. It's not that bad. Thank you, man. No problem. Simon. Simon Romero behind the grind. Mr. Mandel, Mandel Nalo, how are you today, my friend? Good. Thank you, Simon. So I have two for you here. Um, I just want to know how impactful has Coach Faraz Zahabi been throughout your career? Yeah, huge impact. I mean, uh, as far as MMA coaches go, he's, he's the, I mean, coach and fighter, you need to have a good synergy. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, we're a great fit together. And he's really kind of opened my eyes to the way you should think about fighting. And uh, yeah, he's a huge impact been with him forever. And my second question for you would be, I know he's a short notice replacement, but what is something you've seen in Ricardo's fights that uh, excites you for Friday night? Uh, just the fact that he's a, he's a guy that doesn't really like decisions. So he's a guy that's going to try to make something happen, which is always fun. Chris? Hey, Mandel, uh, Canadian myself, Chris Mancuso, Tarps Off Sports. Um, being a Canadian, you know, uh, uh, most of the other people wouldn't understand this, but there's an added pressure that comes with being an athlete from Canada because if you have a, even a small amount of success, everybody hops on the bandwagon and you become a global, uh, a national star. Uh, do you feel that pressure a bit more back home or are you settling into life over in the States? Uh, I still live in Canada. Um, so, but, uh, you know, I think I'm much too small to feel any kind of uh, national athlete tr uh, pressure right now. If I was Rory, you know, that's a question for Rory. For me, uh, <laughs> it's all the same. I'm just a guy. Thanks, buddy. Jonah? Uh, hey, Mando, how you doing? Uh, Jonah here from uh, Behind the Grind. Howdy. How are you? Uh, I just want to ask, uh, how you, uh, your experience, uh, you know, even though you only have uh, eight fights on, on your professional career, um, you've been doing this for such a long time. How do you think that that plays a factor um, against a guy like Ricardo? Yeah, you know, time in, like, I don't know. This, I don't know if that 10,000 hours thing is true or not. People shout around a lot, but experience pays off. Uh, and in MMA, there's that's no different. So I think it's a, uh, it's huge having time in with good guys. That's all for me. Thank you, Mando. Rick Sanchez. Hey, Mandel. This is from live from Redici. How are you doing, man? Good. How are you? Uh, I just want to talk about the fight about, <laughs> sorry about that. I just want to talk about the fight, the past fight. Did you receive any backlash or criticism from oh. No, and from, from like left. fans or media or anything. Yeah, no, I really didn't. But to you know, maybe I did, but I kind of go radio silent and stay away from all that stuff in the weeks following a fight. So maybe people were talking a bunch of trash about me, but I didn't hear it. 
And just the uh, just the second part, like what you learn from live and learn from the past fight. That fight, I just uh, you know learn to keep my knees up. <laughs> uh, it's hard to really say. It was so short, and it was such a freak accident that uh, you know you you just kind of learned that. I learned kind of what I already knew. It reaffirmed what I already knew about fighting, which is anything can happen on the day. You just count your blessings if you're not injured and you can get back in there, do it again. Let's take a couple more here. Ronald. Thank you. This is Ronald Smith from Getting Real. Mandel, how you doing, brother? Good. How are you? Doing as well as I can. And for you, man, 2020 has been such a hard year for so many people, but also so eye-opening. So for yourself, what did you learn for you during everything? everything that went down during that year uh, in 2020 still 2021 is also crazy but uh yeah you just have to understand what what type of things you really value right um that was the main thing i think everybody kind of came came upon that same epiphany uh in 2020 is just like you, you there are things that you can you can let go and there are things you really value. And uh, it, it really kind of narrowed in on what, what actually keeps me going in life. I don't know if that's any good, I don't know. No, that's exactly, I want, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. And the last question I got for you, just what you said about what values for you and through yourself, through your career, when it's all said and done, what do you hope, what do you hope for yourself to look back on to say, I'm proud of what I've done in my life? Yeah, the ultimate goal is to be considered one of the best fighters uh, to have done it. Um, there's a lot of work to be done, but that, like, as far as a career goes, that's it. Uh, that would be the ultimate goal. Last question here. I've got uh, one question. Hi, Adrian Mesia from Slovak Svet MMA. Actually, uh, last week, Slovak fighter Michal Manimokri told us that while he trade in uh, Canada, three star, that you were the fighter who made the biggest impression on him. He said that you have great uh, stri striking, also really, you think really well during sparrings, and also, also you hit really hard and have a great eye. How do you feel when you hear those words from another professional fighter? Yeah, it's always nice to hear. Uh... I'm sorry, I missed the name of the guy you were saying. Michal Mokri, Michal Mani Mokri. Oh, Mike, yeah, yeah. So Mike is amazing. He was with us at TriStar for a good long time. I know he just fought. He had a, I think he lost a decision last week. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it's always nice training, uh, having your training partners speak highly of you. And, uh, you know, the gym dynamic is very important. And so I'm glad that uh, he, he likes me. <laughs> I like him too. All right. Thank you very much for the time, Mandel. Good luck the rest of the week. Cool. Thank you very much, guys.
All right, we are now being joined by Tyrell Fortune. Once again, we'll begin with a few questions from the media. Keith Schillen, your line is now live. Hey, Tyrell, it's Keith Schillen from Sherdog. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you? Uh, I'm excellent. Thanks for asking. Uh, first thing I got I to ask you, you were supposed to face Matt Mitrione. Instead, you got Jack May. That's a guy that you have a little bit of history with. Uh, how satisfying is it to face Jack May? And you can kind of close that chapter out. Um, you know, I was looking forward to Matt. Obviously, it's a bigger name, bigger opponent. Uh, but being able to get this one, run this one back is a, is a satisfying, very satisfying for me. Now, is the plan to, you know, get this one over quickly and then, and then face Matt next? Is that the plan? Um, you know, well, I'm not the matchmaker, so I don't really, uh, that, that's not really my job. I just fight whoever they ask me to. But, um, you know, I honestly looking at the rankings now, no, I don't want to fight Matt. Okay. Uh, uh, last question, because I know we got other people on. Do you still follow the sport of wrestling? On I mean, wrestling, I'm talking about, you know, the NCAAs, the Olympics, all that. Yes, I do. I'm actually flying straight from here to Texas to watch uh, the uh, finals. Oh, excellent. Uh, the reason why I asked you that, so that's perfect, because you're going to be in the arena I think about a guy like Gabriel Stevenson, who I'm sure you know, he's talking about when he's done wrestling, going to WWF. That was a very similar situation that you were in. How do you convince a guy like him or just any of these wrestlers who might be ending their careers this weekend to jump over to MMA instead? I mean, I think it's all about your personality and, and you know, what, what you're looking forward to. Obviously, if he wants to go to WWE, then he's looking at more of acting, not really trying to get in too much violence. You know what I mean? That, that might not just be his cup of tea to get punched in the face. So I think it's just all about how you look at the sport and really just the physical activity you want to put into it. That's WWE's acting essentially. You know what I mean? You you work out. It's a hard workout. I'm not taking anything away from those guys. They do they do train their asses off, but uh, it's not the same thing as this. You know what I mean? Good luck, to you sir. Thank you, Simon. Simon Merrow behind the grind, uh, Mr. Tower Fortune. How are you today, my friend? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very well. So I have two questions for you here. You and your brother are both ranked in your respective divisions. What were the emotions uh, of you both being ranked? I mean, it was very satisfying for for a little bit. You know what I mean? It's just like uh, the beginning of, you know, where you guys, where you want to start off at with your brother, just being ranked in the top 10, but it's not the final goal, you know? So it's just a little bit more motivating to keep pushing and get to the top. So when we spoke uh, a little while ago, uh, you said you wanted to be just outside the top 10. I guess, were you happy where uh, you were in your, in your ranking? Um, I, I guess really, too, when we spoke, I hadn't really looked at the, the roster too much. So I didn't really uh, put in account, like, where everybody was at. So now looking at it, it makes, a lot, makes a lot of sense where I'm at. But, um, yeah, I'd, I'd say I'm fine with where I was ranked. And this last one I have for you here, how do you match up uh, with the heavyweights above you in the rankings? I think I can dominate every single one of them. Chris? Hey, Tyrell. Chris Bancuso, uh, Tarps Off Sports. I have a question here. I know you're not the matchmaker, but you look at the guys ahead of you and other fighters in the heavyweight division. Czech Congo, Fado. Any other guys? Like What guys like that interest you the most here coming forward? Valentin Modovsky. Modovsky? Okay. That's everything, my man. Have a good one and uh, best of luck. Thank you. You too. Tony? Sorry, I hope, hope you're well. Can't understand you. I had a couple of, um, couple of releases from, from another promotion, most re recently uh, Junior De Santos and Alistair Overy. Um, would, would you like to, to match up with either of those guys? I can't understand them. Could you repeat that question, Tony? Yeah, sorry. I was just saying, we, we've recently seen Junior De Santos and Alistair Overy leave the UFC. Um, and I, I, I read in a recent article, you, you'd shown some interest in fighting either of those guys. Is there a preference as to, as to who you'd, you'd rather fight out of both of them? Um, I, I, out of those two, I'd rather pick a Junior Dos Santos. I think he has a bigger name. I think his stand-up is a little bit more resound than um, Alistair Overy. And it looks like he has a little bit more in the tank than... Um, than what Alistair's been showing in his last few fights, but uh, either one of them would be an honor to step in the cage with. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Dunno? Hey, Tyrell. Uh, when you saw that uh, the, the champion of your division had gone off to, to pursue uh, a tournament in a, a separate weight class, did that piss you off at all? You know, that, that he could potentially be, be out of action for, I mean, we've seen how long this featherweight tournament's gone on. It could be a year and a half, two years. Nope, doesn't bother me at all. That got nothing to do with me. That's his uh, career choice. 
do you believe that when he comes back, you will have have done enough to maybe be in in contention to to fight for that that heavyweight title? One hundred percent. All right, thank you very much, James McDonough. Hi, Terrell. This is James from Strictly MMA. Just have one question for you. Um, you've already been in the cage with Jack May, so you've gotten a feel for it. You, it. The fight was looking like it was going your way the first time. Now with that experience, do you have a prediction, like a vision of how you see this fight playing out on Friday night? Violently. That's really about it. I mean, this guy, uh, he had been starting to talk shit to me for since my last fight when I fought Saeed Soma. And uh, so he was just trying to trying to get back in the cage with me for a while, I guess. And uh, so, no, I mean, he's actually motivated me to uh, to fight him. So I can say I'm looking forward to getting in the cage again with him. Steven? Hey, Tyrell. Um, so you said that you looked at the rankings and your feelings about uh, rebooking that fight with Mitrione changed. Um, well, I, I guess, were you surprised when you know, they came out and you were two spots ahead of them? Um, no, not really. I wasn't surprised. I just, you know, I don't know what the, what the people are taking into account when they're doing these rankings. And I think I'm a lot harder judge on myself than most people are. So for me, it was just, uh, I guess, I was, like I said, just, I was just being more, a harder judge on myself than most people are. So I just wanted to, um, I guess try to be more be more realistic with it after I started to look at the roster and, and look where everybody was placed it started to make more sense. I mean I, I know you're a slightly biased source, but would you put yourself at number six? Yeah, I think number six is a is a good spot. I mean, I haven't been the guys that are in front of me I haven't fought yet, most of them. So uh the only guy I fought was Tim Johnson and I lost. So it makes sense for me to at least be behind him. And um everybody else is uh that's in front of me has been doing really well. And uh, so, no, I think it makes sense to, to to put me where I'm at. From watching your career and from what you've said in the past, it seems like getting ranked opposition has been part of the big problem for your career, no? What do you mean? Well, I mean, like, getting those big-name fights is going to get you to the next level in your career. Would you agree that that's been an issue? Yes, 100%. So, so to see, having the rankings does put it in a better perspective, and it does give me a, a clear sight of, you know, who to, who I want to fight next and who to target after. So if it's not Mitrione and you, you know, beat, uh, if you if you win on Friday, uh, who would you like to fight? Valentin Modowski. And, and why him in particular? He's number three. So uh, he's in front of me. So he takes me one, clubs, one step closer to getting to the belt. Do you like the style matchup? 100%. I think, I, I think I'm a good style matchup against anybody in, in front of me. Gotcha. Thanks. Nate? Yes, sir. Uh, I've seen that you've recently gotten back into snowboarding, and you said how important it is to have other hobbies to keep your mind off of fighting. And I was just curious how that um, has helped your mentality going into this fight. Oh, man, it was just some time to release and, and get away and – you know, not be so absorbed in, in the sport. Um, I think you get, you lose sight of, you know, life itself when you uh, constantly fight and constantly training and you don't really give yourself time for anything else. And it's just hard, you know, when you're, when you're training all the time, you're worried about getting injured from doing anything. So when you have that time off, you can go, go have some fun. It's, it's nice to just give your mind and body a break. Awesome. And then I was also on your Instagram and I saw uh, the Kobe tribute tattoo that you have. Yes, and I was just wondering um, if you could maybe explain how the Mamba mentality has influenced you, not only in your MMA career, but just in life overall and how big of an impact he had on you. I mean, Kobe was probably one of the hardest workers we know in, in my generation. So I think just that mentality of just always willing to put that extra work in and never making excuses to get up and get it done is always pushed me just growing up as a kid. You know, I always wanted to be the best at whatever I'd done, whether it was tic-tac-toe, hopscotch, rock, paper, scissors, I wanted to be the best. So I think that mentality just carries you and pushes you continuously to just always strive to be better. All right, we'll take one or two more here. Jonah? Hey, Tyrell, uh, Jonah Ross here from Behind the Grind. Uh, we've seen lately um, fighters, uh, mainly wrestlers that fall in love with um, throwing their hands rather than, you know, relying on the game plan that got them there. Uh, what are your thoughts on guys that do this and, um, you know, fall short? 
Um, I mean, it's, you got to be a, be, be willing to take a risk. I mean, this isn't wrestling anymore, so you got to be well-rounded. Eventually, you're going to find somebody who's going to be able to stuff, touch, takedowns, and and wrestle just like you. So what are you going to do when that happens when you can't, you know, can't get a takedown? You're going to have to fight. And if you haven't de- developed the skills and you aren't confident in your hands, then it's not going to be a good night for you. So I think uh, I think every wrestler should take that chance and risk to get their hands better and focus on the boxing because I've been wrestling since I was in the third grade. I think it would be hard for anybody to really out-wrestle me in the sport of MMA because no one has the accolades I do in wrestling in the sport. So for me, it's just more of being more of a well-rounded MMA fighter. This isn't a wrestling anymore. You just you got to learn how to fight. Last one, Ronald. Hello, man. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Man, I can't complain. And man, I, you you've been in Bellator since tw- in 2016 through your growth, and now you look now at 2021. If you could look back at, at that Tyro back then, what could you say has changed from that moment? The knowledge that I've obtained and the experience, I mean, the things that I've went through just through these last four years have been uh, been been really good for me in, in, in a way. You know, um, I had an injury, two surgeries that I was out for a whole 11 months and couldn't train. I got knocked out for the first time in my life. That really uh, was a big wave for me. It carried on for a little bit that more than I expected, but it was a good mental mental challenge for me to just get past that and work through that. And so it's just a lot of things that you learn about yourself and growth within the sport that I think that, you know, the Tyrell at first coming into the sport, I had no idea that this sport would present those challenges and, you know, would be would be that much work for me. But no, I think it's a I would I love the where I've ended up now in the last four years since I've started. All right. Thanks for the time, Tyrell. Good luck this week. Thank you. Next up, we have Jason Jackson. We are now being joined by Jason Jackson. Begin with a few questions from the media. Keith Schilling, your line is now live. Hey, Jason, it's Keith Schilling from Sure Dog. How you doing, man? How you doing, sir? Uh, I'm doing great. You don't have to call me sir. I appreciate that, though. Uh, uh-huh. you're, I was looking at your record. You're 10 and 2 over your last 12. One was an injury, the other one was that split decision loss to Ed Ruth that many people thought you should have won. That said, the rankings just came out. You're sixth. Do you feel like you're being overlooked in the division, despite this incredible record you have right now? Uh, yes, I, I didn't. Like I said, I felt like I haven't lost. Uh, to me personally, I haven't lost to Ed Roof. I haven't lost since I came Bellator. But the ranking kind of confused me. I, I'm, I'm confused myself by the by the rankings because at first Bellator put up a ranking say one to five, and I was in a picture, so I didn't understand how I end up in six. So. You know, I just got to fight. I get a chance, a big opportunity to fight number number three guys, which I consider number one. And once I beat them, then there's no more question. Now, you just mentioned, you know, you both are highly ranked. Are you looking at this as a number one contender match? Like, if you win, is the title the next shot? Absolutely. Absolutely. And if, like I said in the get-go, if Bellator doesn't feel that way or anyone in the other world to wait that feels feels like they're not the champ and they disagree, then we'll go fight for that position. I got two last questions. Uh, Neiman did an interview earlier this week and he was saying that he wanted Michael Page to end up with you. It seemed like that was the fight he wanted. Do you think he's looking past you? Well, no, because Michael Page would be an easier fight than me because I could grapple. What are you talking about? He's a smart guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last one, speaking about that, how do you feel like your grappling matches up with, you know, a Gracie? The same way how his striking matched up with mine. All right, good luck to you, sir. Yes, thank you. Tony? Hi, Jason. Good, good afternoon. Um, obviously, your, your last 
last fight against Benson Henderson. How 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 did it feel to beat beat such a, a big name as, as Benson Henderson has been in in the sport of mixed martial arts? It, it feels good, but if I would, it would have felt a, a lot better if I would have beat him at an earlier time. And you know, Ben Henderson, he came out and you know he came and gave it his all, even though he took that fight on short notice. But I felt like I could have finished him. I made a lot of mistake that I needed to see and go back to the drawing board and work. And 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 obviously you're coming off of the back of of three back to back wins. Um, you know, just from a confidence perspective, how, does that put you in, in a different headspace going into this fight now? It's four back to back. Don't forget the Ed Roof. It's four Sorry. back to back. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, to me, I don't, I don't feel no worry. I don't I, because I'm so pre prepared. You know, I have a very good preparation for this camp, better than any other camp that I had so far in Bellator. So, all my words are into my camp, and you know, go out and smash. Jim, Jim for small Miami Herald. Thank you. Talk a little bit more about that camp and what made that camp so much better or you working better in the camp just what was it all about it, because last year during the quarantine it was very hard to get work and consistent work it was just here and there but during 21st i get you know everything is kind of open up and lifting it's it kind of I, I got more time to go to the hills the beach meet all my coaches meet up in, in a, a more group and get better session where does the victory, where does that get you in the next step? I'm the guy to keep that, keep my eye on. I mean, I'm the guy that better to have to keep the eye on in this division. I'm going to be the next welterweight champion this year. And lastly, after you get your victory, will you be celebrating by going to WrestleMania in Tampa? That, well, well, if they're allowing crowd and I get my hands on some tickets and why not? I would love to take the family there and go celebrate. Win, lose, or draw. Still, I would love to go for the first time experience WrestleMania. James? It's James here from Strictly MMA. Just a couple questions for you, Jason. Um, you just beat a big name in Benson Henderson. I know you said you would have liked it to be you know, earlier, but it's still a big name, a former UFC lightweight champ. Now taking on Neiman Gracie, Gracie being so symbolic in the sport of mixed martial arts. I mean, what does it mean to you to be fighting a Gracie member? It, this right here, fighting Gracie would be good because his only loss in Bellator is, is to form a champ. And I want to be the guy to be also put a Gracie on under my name the same way um, Rory McDonald be him and, you know, say he's the guy to beat. I want to be the guy to finish him. First guy to finish Grayson. Absolutely. And then this one, I might be late to the party with this one, but... Can you just tell me where the, the nickname came from, the ass kicking machine? I mean, who gave it to you? Was it you? Was it someone else? I, I got it from, I'm, I did it myself. And my, was my first amateur fight or was my third amateur fight, I introduced the ass kicking machine and the whole crowd stopped laughing and just, was just, I get, they were just dying. And then once I finished the fight, it was like, yes, this guy's a machine. He's an ass kicking machine for real. But it kind of came along watching a lot of WWE. Santiago? Hi, Jason. Greetings from Amsterdam and thank you for the time. Thank you. Henry Hoft. Henry Hoft was a guest on the famous Weighing In podcast hosted by Josh Thompson and Big John McCarthy. He said on that podcast that you are the sunshine of Sanford MMA with your good <laughs> vibes and your beautiful music in the morning. Can you feel that in the gym as well, that people really appreciate your contribution to the team? Well, I'm, I'm always told, but you know, I just said if I could get everybody on the same wavelength, then you know, it will be good as that I'm on. So, you know, one person alone can't bring that, that energy. You need everybody to be on the same page. So it's better that way and easier. Last one for me, Jason. How special is it to train under Dutch world-class trainer Henry Hoft? And what did he do to make you a better fighter? It was the missing piece to my puzzle. 
I knew how to do a little Muay Thai. I knew how to box. I knew how to do wrestling. But the kickboxing and everything put together, once I met Henry, he showed me how to stay there, stay on your ground, and fight like a man. And I adapt that into my style for the movement and everything. So it kind of completes me. Me? Uh, so last night, an interview came out on the MMA Junkie uh, with, with your opponent, Gracie. Uh, when talking about your skills, uh, he said he thinks you are good at striking, but not that good, not that dangerous. What do you make of his analysis of your skills? Well, same way I feel. I feel like he's really good at um, jiu-jitsu, but I don't feel like not that dangerous because I got my hands. We, we're not doing jiu-jitsu. You got these right here. You have to think about these. Yes, sir. And can we hear uh, you also said that Showtime is a boxing network. People want to see a fight especially with a guy that throws hands like me, what can the people expect this weekend? They have to expect some firework, and I'm going to knock Gracie out. You don't think my hands are dangerous? Watch. You don't got no stand-up. Dylan? Hey there, Jason. How's it going? I'm doing good. Yeah, I appreciate you making some time. I think a lot has been made in this, you know, scrum about your time and, you know, Florida and Sanford MMA, but, you know, born in Kingston, Jamaica, I'm kind of curious your thoughts on just, you know, the domestic growth of mixed martial arts there. Cause it seems like MMA Jamaica sports federation is making big strides in regulating and promoting the sport. So can you speak about the grassroots MMA scene in Jamaica? Yes, um, definitely need a, a, a bit more developing. You know, they need re good wrestling program and good kickboxing program, stuff like that. Boxing, world-class coaches. That's all I feel like the, the um, Jamaican Federation is missing. You got all the ethic and all the talents just waiting. Yeah, fair point. Thanks for the time, man. Thank you. Chris? Hey, Ass Kicking Machine, it's Chris from TarpsOffSports.com. And I just, good, good talking to you, man. It's great to see you. Now, I know you came into the promotion, I believe, in 2018 off the top of my head. What is the difference between the Jason Jackson now as opposed to the Jason Jackson then? And then I just have one more for you after that. Um, then, well, in 2018, I was trying to get back on my feet because I broke my leg in 2018, was it? and came back and fought it in the 2018 or 2017, one year I broke my leg and had to get my confidence, go out there and fight. And I didn't get signed, re -signed. I came back, went and worked again, a local team and get re-signed to Bellator. And I'm here and I just realized like, yes, it's my time. You know, it's my time. I just have to go. Don't second guess it, go, because everything's already written in the script. Incredible. And last question for you. You brought up WrestleMania. If the ass kicking machine could headline WrestleMania against one wrestler, past or present, who would it be? Undertaker. <laughs> Matthew? How's it going, Jason? This is Matthew Potterman from IMMA News. How you doing, Matthew? Hey, I'm doing well. Thank you. Hey, so my first question is to you, you know, where do you see yourself here in the next five years of your career? Next five years? Yeah. Um, wow. Next five years, um, whooping ass, cashing check and taking names. I love it. One more question for you too, brother. If so, if you win this fight, of course, you are ranked six in the welterweight division currently fighting the number three guy. You know, I think a great fight between you and Michael Venom Page would be great. Your striking has grown exponentially since working with Henry Hooft and Michael Venom Page is one of the best strikers in the division too. How would you stylistically match up with him and uh, how would you like that fight to be next? Yeah, that fight would be awesome because I, Michael Venom Page, he also have, he have an athletic ex fiber explosive muscle the same way I do. It's like two mongoose going against two mo another mongoose, but one mongoose know how to grapple. We'll take a couple more here. Simon? Simon Romero behind the grind. Yes. Mr. Jason Jackson, how are you today, my friend? I'm doing awesome. Awesome, awesome. So I like to hear. So you're representing Jamaica. How does it feel representing your own country on the world stage? Well, no matter what I do, I'm going to rep represent my country because, you know, Jamaican people are prideful and proud set of people. So. And my second question for you would be, uh, what steps do you need to take in order to bring home the W on Friday night? Keep the fight standing and put my hands on this guy. 
All right, last one here, Jonah. Hey, Jason, Jonah Rawls here from Behind the Grind. Uh, I'm wondering how uh, the guys at Samford, the guys and ladies at Samford MMA are able to help you um, kind of negate the grappling of, of Neiman Gracie. Well, we grapple every, all his favorite positions. And, you know, we have grapplers that, that definitely are more higher level when it comes to wrestling and jiu-jitsu. So um, I, I said when, when I make my professional debut as far as fighting in, in the local scene, Nemo and Gracie probably was just a blue belt, purple belt. So I have experience on my side. I, I fought plenty of black belts. So I, I know how to fight a black belt. Thanks for the time, Jason. Good luck on Friday. Next up is Jack May. All right, we are now being joined by Jack May. Once again, we'll begin with a few questions from the media. Keith Schillen, your line is now live. Hey, Jack, it's Keith Schillen for sure. Doug, how you doing, man? I'm good, how are you? I'm excellent. So first question I want to ask you is we just talked to Tyrell and he says that you've been talking trash to him and this and that. Is, is it personal between you two? <laughs> Always two sides of every story, right? Sure. Hell yeah. Uh, there's been some back and forth um on instagram uh for me um i don't i don't make it personal man this is just business so i'm here to do a job um but yeah you know to get the fight to hype the fight to take it to that next level a little shit talking never hurts <laughs> yeah absolutely we love that uh so you guys fought it was obviously very briefly end up becoming a no contest. Is there anything you can take away from, from that first fight? Uh, I mean, it was what, two and a half, three minutes in the first round. Um, you know, a lot of people, uh, don't know and I'm not making excuses, but I didn't get, um, you know, much at, uh, of all sparring, um, leading up to that fight due to injuries. So, um, as comfortable as I felt, I feel I'll be even more comfortable with my stand up. Um, and as far as, uh, on the floor with him on top of me or against the cage. Uh, we all saw what happened. Um, you know, he was doing his thing. He got his takedown, he was doing his thing, but then, you know, um, I found my way back up. Um, 
and then uh, the low ball happened. Uh, you're you're fighting in the casino. If if I want to make money and I'm in the casino, wh what do I bet? You know, uh, what's I, mean, I, bet I, I, I believe in myself, so you should believe. I mean, if knockout first round, like what's? Um, you know, I think that. Uh, I think he likes to. I think he's gonna try and bait me in, um, and I'm just gonna stay patient and um, stay long, and uh, work my game. And uh, it's no secret, man. Um, I know I possess power, um, and I know that you know if it's not one shot, then once I start chipping away um, and I land that big shot, I, I can turn your lights out. Excellent. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you, Donna. Hi, Jack. How's it going? I'm good. Yourself? I'm doing okay. Uh, you've obviously fought in this bubble before uh, against uh, the, the same opponent, but then you fought on, on XMMA, and I understand that things are very, very different in Florida when it comes to the, the way that you have to quarantine before a fight and, and, and all that stuff. Is it difficult coming back into this environment where it's, I would imagine, a whole lot stricter? Not at all. Um, we knew what we were expecting coming back. Um, and then, uh, you know, we just, depend, you know, different organizations, they just run things differently. Um, as long as everybody's, you know, staying safe and, and doing their part, then, uh, at the end of the day, we all get to fight and, uh, the show runs on. So, uh, it's not difficult. It wasn't difficult. Um, I'm fine. Uh, Bellator puts on a hell of a show and, and everybody in the organization, uh, from check-in, uh, to everything you know it's they make it easy big uh television exposure for you uh, this week as well you know it's going to be on the the first show on showtime uh, you must be excited about that i am excited yes looking forward to it do you think that a, a big performance for you uh raises your stock in, in in the public eye and 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 puts you i mean this guy's number six ranked in the division i mean it puts you right at at, at that level of competition doesn't it yeah i mean i'm here for a reason um if I if I if and when I win, then I take the the six spot in the division. Tony, hi Jack, how are you? I'm good, thanks. You good? Good. If if the internet is to be believed, you you turn forty in two weeks' time. Is is a win over Tyrell the biggest present that you could you could want for your fortieth birthday? Oh uh, man, why well, don't I don't see any other. Uh... Any other better better present than waking up to my my beautiful wife and my two beautiful little girls? But yeah, man, turning forty and this is just an early birthday present for myself. And how how are you planning on spending your fortieth birthday? I'll be in Palm Springs. Enjoy, enjoying myself. Yeah, well, ha happy birthday, happy early birthday, and, and thanks. I appreciate it, <laughs> Dylan. Hey there, Jack. How's it going? Good, you. I'm doing well, thanks. And yeah, just off the backdrop of some of the prior questions, you know, the rematch with Terrell Fortune, a ranked heavyweight opponent, but your last fight being with XMMA there. I'm kind of curious, are you locked into some form of multi-fight deal with Bellator? Is this like a one-fight deal for the Fortune rematch? Can you kind of talk about that? No, I mean, um, the pay is good. Uh, it's better than the first one, the way Fortune, and there's a two-fight option. Awesome. Thanks for the time, man. Yep. Thank you. Chris. Hey, Jack. How's it going? man? Chris Mancuso, TarpsoftSports.com. I just wanted to say after the last fight versus Fortune, he kind of insinuated, I think he said something, and I'm paraphrasing here along the lines of, he had taken nut shots before multiple times and continued. Do you take those comments and insinuating maybe that you should have continued fighting as motivation heading into the fight? No, um, some of us have bigger nuts than others um, is the way I look at it. But, you know, we all have our own um, look at things, and uh, he's entitled to his own opinion. But, um, I mean, good for him, you know. But uh, I, I, did what I, I did what I could, and, um, you know, afterwards, you know, two emergency room trips and piss and blood and – not being able to function for over a month, you know. I mean, I know in my heart, I go to bed easy. My conscience is 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 at ease with with what happened. Thanks, Jack. 
No problem. Harry? Harry, your line is live. Oh, I'm sorry. I was uh, muted. Uh, hey, Jack. Harry Mack from the Bookie's Basement. I hope all is well. You too. Uh, so I just wanted to ask, do you feel any additional pressure stepping in for a guy with uh, Matt Metrion's resume? No, I don't. Um, this is the, an opportunity for myself. Um, I know that Fortune's been preparing for Matt Metrion. I, I'm friends with Matt. I know Matt. Um, I've known Matt for a while. Um, whatever happened with him and his situation, I hope all is well. But uh, he he pulled out, and I I'm going to capitalize. All right, one or two more here, Simon. Hey, Jack, Simon Romero behind the grind. Uh, I just want to know what made you want to step into a fight against Tyrell once again on Friday night? Why not? Um, I don't see anything that's big and scary. Ronald? Ronald, go ahead. Ronald Smith from the Getting Real. Jack May, how you doing, my brother? I'm good, man. How are you? Can't complain. And awesome. man, when the when the when the call came for you to step in to fight against Tyrell, it, it, at one point did you ever even stop to think, should I do it, or were you just like, give me the ball, I'm gonna run with it? Uh, give me the ball and let's run with it. And last no, question I got, there was, no, there was no hesitation. And last question I got for you, through your for your career when it's all said and done, because you care about your family so much. What do you want your family to look back at you when it's all said and done when you hang your gloves up for your career? Um, you know, you, you, what you get, you get out of it what you put into it. And, uh, man, I came from growing up in a trailer park. Um, uh, God gave me talent, and um, I used it to better my family's life. And uh, never, they never want or need anything. Um, and at the end of the day, man, I'm just a true warrior that, uh, has never, has never ducked a fight, uh, has always gone out and lived or died by the sword. Last one here, Jack Wannon. Hey Jack, I have two questions for you. First, um, before you were even offered this fight, was uh, a rematch against Fortune something that you wanted? Absolutely. I think that's a, a fair shake. And you mentioned that um, around the first time you faced him, you didn't get much time training before the fight. This time, even though it was a short notice call, were you able to prepare for this and uh, get some sort of training in before? Yeah, so I, I had just fought two months ago. And then um, since that fight, um, we've, we've stayed active. So I'm not coming off the couch for this one. All right. Thanks for the time, Jack. And uh, <clears throat> good luck on Friday. Thank you.
All right. We are now being joined by Neiman Gracie. Once again, we'll begin with a few questions from the media. Tony, your line is now live. Hi, Neiman. Hey, Tony. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Um, quick question. I, I, I noticed recently that you, you mentioned the, um, the Michael Venom Page fight falling out. What, what from, you, from your side of things, why didn't that fight come to fruition? Man, I don't know. Uh, I, I could come here and talk a lot of shit about him, saying that he's scared, he don't want to take the fight, but I think it's because of the craziness that's going down in the UK with the COVID. And they told me, he said it's kind of hard for him to train and he couldn't get ready in time. And that's why it didn't happen. And, and you, you, you're obviously taking on the ass-kicking ass machine, Jason Jackson. And last time out in, in his fight with Benson Henderson, he, you know, he, he won a, a very tough fight. What did you, do you make of that performance? And, and you know, what, what do you well, make of your opponent, Jason? Great, great performance against an ex-champ, you know. Uh, I think it was a great fight. He fought very well. He did the perfect fight against Benson and was a good fight. Keith? Keith, go ahead. All right, we'll move on here. Next up, we have Simon. Simon, your line is now live. Simon Romero, behind the grind. Neiman, I only have one for you today, but I just want to know, you only have one loss against a former champion. If that fight was to ever happen again, how would that one fold out? I think I'll finish it this time. He's not going to be able to escape like he did last time. Uh, all he did in that fight was escape, escape, escape. He didn't attack at all, you know? Like, I think this time I'll be smarter and um, I'll have the rule book under my arm to fight him if I fight him again. And definitely it will, will be a different fight. Gabriel? Hello, Neiman. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, so uh, two questions. Uh, the first one, this is the first event where there's now official Bellator rankings. What was your reaction to when you saw that they had you as third in Bellator's welterweight division? I think it's bullshit. <laughs> uh, I think either me or Amosov should be the, at, the, at the top of the first, and Michael Page could be uh, uh, under us because we've been fighting a tougher competition. So I think we should be ranked higher than him. I think Jason Jackson should be ranked higher, but it's okay. Rankings in MMA, uh, are, are, it's a joke, you know? They don't give you title fights. They just, they just there to, to, for a show, you know? My final question, you've obviously grown so much in the time that you've been in Bellator and throughout your career. What do you most want to show for yourself in your fight on Friday? Nothing. I want to keep doing what I'm doing and uh, try to get a submission. There's nothing else to do. Jim? Hey, Jim Varsalo, Miami Herald. Neiman, how did training go for you for this one? Did you do anything different in training for this opponent? Yeah, uh, I moved to California and I moved to King's MMA. I've been training at King's MMA with Master Rafael Cordero and all his team. So I have different training partners, different camp. Everything was different. And how did that go for you, being it was different, something new? It was awesome, man. I trained with champions and I was trained by a, a, one of the best coaches, if not the best coach in the world. So I'm super, super ready for this fight, and I can't wait. And lastly, you went to California. Did you ever do any training in Tampa or South Florida down here, or ever want to do some training here? We've got some good training down here, too. Yeah, you guys got some great training there, but I'm a California guy, so there's no, not much surfing there, so I don't think I'm going there anytime soon. Keith? Man, I was wrong with the question, huh? All right, move on here. Harry? Hey, Neiman, Harry Mack from the Bookies Basement. I just have uh, two quick questions. So 
Uh, first off, you're a slight betting underdog currently at a minus 105 to Jason Jackson's minus 120. So I just wanted to know, is that something that you think about or uh, that kind of changes your perspective going into a fight? No, I didn't even know about it. I've never checked those things. They don't make a difference. And it's good to be the underdog. I love it. It's good. Well, there you go. And uh, secondly, as a fellow Jewish person, uh, I'm just kind of curious, other than yourself, who would you consider the best Jewish fighter on earth right now? Uh, I don't know. Maybe Aviv Gozali. He's doing a great job. I think Aviv is doing a great job here in Bellator. And uh, we're going to the top. Donna? Hey, Neiman. Um, your fellow countryman, uh, is in the main event, uh, Patricio Pitbull. What's your prediction for that fight? Man, it's going to be a war. Remember the first one was a radio war? Yeah. And this one is going to be even harder, I think. But uh, I think Patricio will come on top, and uh, he's the champ champ for a reason, you know? Living in California, I would imagine that, I mean, you talked a little bit about uh, Michael Venom Page having difficulty over in, in London. It seems to me like you would have similar difficulties training in California, right? It's it's pretty much a, a completely shut down state at the moment. Yeah, it's everywhere, I think, you know, like some places are, are worse than others. But uh, I was able to get training in California, so it wasn't that hard, you know. I, I'm, I was in a big camp with a lot of fighters, so we were able to train well for this fight. Santiago? Shalom, Niman. Greetings from Amsterdam, and thank you for the time. Shalom, my brother. <laughs> After your spectacular performance against John Fitz, you said you wanted the title shot next. Are you a bit disappointed that you didn't get the next shot at Douglas Lima? And do you think after a win on Friday, you will get that next shot? So I was a little disappointed, yes. Uh, but uh, it is what it is, you know. So... We gotta, if I have to beat the whole division to get to the belt, I'll do it. And uh, I think so. I think if I win this fight and if I win in a great way with a good submission, I will get the, I'll get the title shot. And last one for me, Neiman. What do you think about the evolution of jiu-jitsu in this modern MMA game? Do you think fighters are using their jiu-jitsu in an effective way? Yes, I think so. I think these days are much harder uh, for a jiu-jitsu guy to come here and finish everyone because everybody knows jiu-jitsu now. So I'm fighting against guys that are training jiu-jitsu every day. Some of them are black belts. So it's much harder now. James? Uh, this is James from Strictly MMA. I just got a couple questions for you. Um, I know after you defeated John Fitch, John Fitch mentioned something about possibly wanting to come out and train with you. You said you moved over to California now. Did you guys, were you guys able to link up? No, man, you know, unfortunately not, but uh, this is something I want to do for sure. I feel that I have a lot to learn from him. He's, uh, he has the perfect, if I'm able to get a couple things from his game and put on my game, uh, I'll be even more dangerous than I already am. Absolutely. Then my next question was, obviously, you, you keep saying the goal is the title, right? You want the, you want the title fight, you wanted it now, but now you got Jason Jackson. If you beat Jason Jackson and then they put Michael Venom Page in front of you, I know you've said some things about him. Are you, are you willing to take that fight before the title as well? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, yeah. If they don't give me the title, if they say one more, I'll take it for sure. Or if they say, oh, the title is just in the end of the year, but we have the Michael Venom Page in June or July, I'll take the fight too. So, yeah, man, I fight everybody. It's my job. Dylan? Hey there, Neiman. How's it going? Good. And you? I'm doing good, thanks. I was just noticing with your opponent, Jason Jackson, that they have no official losses via submission. Like, they do have a submission loss as part of the Ultimate Fighter Season 21. But that's categorically an exhibition bout. Is there any level of focus in wanting to hand Jason Jackson that first submission loss or just however the fight unfurls kind of thing more so? Uh, I want to give a submission loss to everyone I fight. <laughs> so it doesn't matter if, if he has a submission loss or not. I fought a couple of guys that never had been submitted before and I was able to submit them. And no, there's no I, an extra thing to want to finish this fight by submission because every fight I want to finish by submission. So that's always my goal. Keith? 
Hey, name it. It's Keith Chill from Sure Dog. How you doing, man? Good, brother. And you? All right. First of all, I apologize for the technical issues. They called on me three times now. Uh, I was doing a podcast last night, and we were talking about this matchup. And one thing I talked about was based on your resume, the level of fighters you're fight facing in 2021, that I actually think that you could go down as the greatest Gracie in MMA. Do you agree with that? And what do you have to do to get that title? Uh, this is one of my goals, actually. Don't tell nobody, but uh, <laughs> I, I want to be remembered as the Gracie that has more wins, maybe the Gracie that has more fights. And if I be remembered as the greatest, Gracie will be great. But uh, this is hard, man. This is a hard thing to, to achieve because we have so many great, great guys that come before me. So I don't really want to be known about about being the best Gracie ever because this is kind of hard. But I want to be the Gracie that has more wins and more fights for sure. Sure. Now, you, you're a student of Henzo Gracie. Uh, Gordon Ryan's a student of Henzo Gracie. It was just announced that he's going to transition to MMA. Uh, how do you think he's going to do? He's going to do great. Well, he's the king. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to do great. He, he was already training down there. He was already doing a couple of sparring. So he's learning and I'm sure he's going to do, he's going to do great. Yeah. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Matthew. How's it going, Neiman? This is Matthew Putterman from MMA News. Good, brother. Hey, my, my first question for you is, you know, what motivates you more, coming off of a loss or coming off a win? Because you've only got one loss in your career so far. Yeah, I think that loss mot motivates me a lot, you know, uh, I really wanted to get a win after the loss. So I think that coming off a loss motivated me more. I was training three to four times a day. My coaches were trying to hold me and tell me not to go train. And I was hungry and I still am very hungry because now I won the belt. But definitely when I come off a loss, I was with the, like, like we say in Brazil, with the knife on my teeth. And do you think this fight here, over a win over Jason Jackson propels you to fight for the title next? Yes, I think so. Jason's a great fighter. He's coming out of great wins. So I think so, especially if I'm able to finish this fight well, you know. All right. And our last question here comes from the line of Chris Mancuso. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, Neiman. Thanks so much for taking this, man. And uh, all the best of luck on Friday. When uh, Jason was here with us earlier, he really seemed to think he had a massive advantage when it comes to striking. If you're unable to get this fight to the ground, I think it was mentioned earlier in the couple questions ago, he's never been submitted before. How, uh, how confident are you and how much work have you put in throughout this pandemic on your striking to give you that, that ability? I've been putting work in striking for years and I strike with a lot of great guys so they always think that they always think they have a big advantage but once we get there they see that's not true like uh, the Ed Root fight that happened the Rory McDonald fight that happened and uh, it will be no different on, uh, on Friday night thanks Neiman thank you all right Neiman thank you very much for the time today and good luck on Friday thank you guys Yeah, it's fine. All right, we are now being joined by Alejandra Lara. Begin with a few questions from the media. Keith, your line is now live. 
Alejandra, hola, ¿cómo estás? Muy bien, ¿y tú? Uh, excellent, thanks for asking. Uh, my first question to you is, yeah, you're going against Kana Watanabe. She's really known for her ground game, specifically her judo, her uchimata throws. Uh, how do you feel you match up spe specifically on the ground with her? Uh, okay, for this uh, fight, I was expecting to to fight a, a hard a hard one. <laughs> so it's it's good match because she's undefeated. I, I feel it's it's great, and of course I'm preparing myself for her game. And I feel that I still have that uh, factor like. Uh, surprise factor because uh, a lot of people haven't see, seen yet uh, a lot of things of my game, specifically in, in my ground game. So I feel I, I don't play, I, I don't gonna play her game, but uh, I still, I'm still prepared for whatever she proposed to me. Uh, are you viewing this as a number one contender matchup? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Be. Yeah. Well, I, I asked you that because you, you faced the current champion. You had an extremely close fight against her. So my question is, what improvements have you made since that matchup so that if you do get you know, a, a matchup against champion again, that you're going to win? Yeah, you know, I feel I am a completely different fighter since that fight. And I feel every every time I enter in the cage, I'm a better fighter. And right now in my career, I feel I'm in that point that now I, I feel I, I really know what I'm doing <laughs> because in the beginning I, I wasn't prepared in any aspect. I, I, I had that, that lack of experience that uh, was so, so important in, in those first fights. But even with that, uh, I know Bellator so my potential and I, I've been working all of this time and improving every area. So right now I feel very good for every challenge. My last question for you, and I hate to bring up a bad topic, but the last time you weighed in, you actually missed weight. Is everything going as planned for this time? <laughs> yeah. Like the first weights, weightings uh, was a little bit easy for me. So I get uh, too much confidence in the last one. And I didn't make that mistake for this one. I, I learned the, the lesson and Right now, I am in the better way I, I've been in for the weight cut. Gabriel? Hello, Alejandra. How are you? Hi. Very good. You? I'm doing good. Uh, Alejandra, can you talk a little bit about how your life has changed since doing Exatlon? Because you've obviously always been a very popular fighter through Bellator, but being on a show like that, I have to imagine... Fans who never watch MMA, now they're big fans of you. What has that been like? Yeah, uh, being in Nexathlon was a big opportunity for me uh, to to improve and to, to grow in, in my social media. And yeah, that it's one of the biggest show for the Hispanic public in in United States and that, that people that was following with me uh, in the show right now, it's... Uh, supporting me in in fighting too so that that's awesome and yeah I, I feel you have to take the, that kind of opportunities but my, my mind was, was always here in my career when you take time off like that to do the show and then you come back to the gym you come back to the world of MMA and preparing for a fight what did you miss the most? Like when you got back in the gym, what did you most look forward to doing again on a daily basis? Uh, I, I miss a little bit in the question. Can you repeat for me, please? Uh, just uh, when you came back to the gym, what did you like the most doing again to focus on MMA? Everything. <laughs> you know, when, when I train, I realize I love this. <laughs> Every time I do my sparring, I wrestling or jiu-jitsu or boxing, I, I love every part of this sport and that's why I'm doing it. Max? Hola Alejandra, soy Max Morales de MMA Pit. Tra eh, platicamos contigo en la semana y, y ahora estamos viendo que, que publicas hace, hace no mucho ese ese tiempo de que estás en peso, que, que estás no muy lejos de ese peso y ahora es la semana de pelea y queremos preguntarte 
físicamente cómo te sientes y también eh, mentalmente, emocionalmente, cómo te sientes ya en la semana de la pelea. Creo que esta es una de las peleas para las que mejor he estado preparada. Siento que he madurado mucho, no solo mentalmente, sino también físicamente, y es algo que, que se nota. Creo que mi plan de alimentación ha ayudado mucho y, y me ha potencializado en, en todas las áreas. Ahorita, como, como he dicho, pues sí, estoy en uno de los mejores pesos, pero porque he sido completamente disciplinada, no he fallado con nada en la alimentación y creo que si uno and in English um, so we spoke with you uh, the, the last weekend and we saw your post on social media that you are close to making weight so feel more mature mentally and physically and I feel like my my preparation in, in every aspect is like more focused and my body is responding really well. And uh, I feel that when you are disciplined and, and when you do the right things, uh, nothing can go wrong. And, and it's how, how I feel that not just uh, like uh, physic, uh, mentally strong, but physically incredible in the best shape shape ever. All right, Donna? Hi, Alejandra. Uh, Jorge Masvidal talked about uh, when he did the show, uh, the, the reality show that you were on, um, he had something of a, a, a career, uh, like a, I, I suppose you would, uh, I don't know what, what you would call it, but he, but he had a, a, a feeling when he came back that he was going to change things in his career. Did you have a similar feeling when you came back from, from doing the show? Actually, yes. Uh, I feel I learned a lot of things about myself in the show. And to be all of that time apart with no phone, with nature and, and just like thinking and spending time with other and different new people make you grow as a person. And uh, I feel I changed my, my way to see the world. I, I feel a lot of things change in my life and and yeah I feel right now I'm in a different uh, part of, of my career did seeing uh, what what happened with with Masvidal he went off he did it he came back you know two fights in he's the biggest star in in the UFC D did seeing what happened with him inspire you to to say yes when they asked you to do the show mm, not not actually because of him but I always like to take that kind of, of challenges. I am a big fan of adventures and of that, that kind of uh, situations that take you out of your comfort zone. So uh, I know that that wasn't going to be an obstacle for me. That just can potential my, my own skills. And yeah, I, I feel that just helped me. Santiago. Hola, Alejandra. Greetings from Amsterdam and thank you for the time. Hola. Is it true that you had your first fight at age 16? And how did you get into fighting at a young age? Uh, my first professional my, my first professional fight was at 17. And I I didn't have amateur fights. <laughs> they they just invite me and I say, okay, of course, why not? And, and I start, but because I trained sand and kung fu and karate, so I just did the okay, let's do this. Last question for me, Alejandra. Are we going to see another amazing walkout with you dancing to the cage again? <laughs> <laughs> that that's something that I, I just can uh avoid. It's it's it came naturally for me and uh, I just listen to the music and go with it. I don't prepare any of that. And yeah, probably. We'll take a couple more here. James. Hi, Alejandro. This is James from Strictly MMA. Just a couple quick questions for you. Um, I feel you're motivated for every fight, but with your opponent coming in this time with an undefeated record, is there a little sprinkle, a little, little extra fire underneath you that gets you out of bed a little bit more knowing that you have a chance to take her all away from a record? Uh, I don't used to think that way because uh, I prefer to to focus on me, on on what I have to do now, and 
uh, yeah, it's just about my, my own work here. And then do you have a final prediction for everybody of how you get it done on Friday night? Mm, I know everyone's gonna enjoy my fight as always. I always give my best and, and my fans know that. Ronald? Ronald Smith from Gate and Real. Alejandra, how you doing? Very good. Thank you. you. Just to bounce off, you said that when you, after you, you left the reality show, you said that that changed your that changed your mindset and we got a bigger mind focus on the future. So for yourself now going to this fight, where do you see this new self of you going forward in this fight? Not just in this fight, yeah, but in life, uh, I feel. Um, ready to face everything that I have in front of me. I'm not afraid of whatever I, I, I have to to fight for. So it's just that. Nate? Hello, Alejandra. I've got uh, one question for you. It was spoken earlier about how many uh, new fans you might have gotten from the, the telenovela. Uh, I just wanted to ask you if you had anything to say to those fans that might be watching. I know uh, you were the first Colombian fighter in Bellator. And, you know, anything to say to a, a young fan watching? Yeah, I feel very proud to represent my Latino American people. And uh, I feel very loved. I feel the support and the energy they are always sending to me. And uh, thank you very much to all my fans and to all the people who are there sending good vibes. And I, I'm not gonna disappoint with, with my fight, you know. Thank you, looking forward to it. All right, last one here, Chris. Hey, Alejandro, just quick question for you here. I know that a lot has been made about the Bellator rankings, and you came in at number four in the division, but number nine in the female pound-for-pound pound list. How proud are you of that? I know that's not the end goal, and you're going to say at the end of the day you want to be champion, but from, you know, it's a brand new thing to Bellator. How, do you, how did that just make you feel seeing your name amongst uh, the top ten women in the sport? Yeah, I feel that it's very motivating, but it's not like a final word. That's something that just makes me uh, to feel that I have to uh, show why I'm there. And I have to show that in, in the cage and to, to demonstrate why I'm there and, and if it's true or not. All right, thank you so much for the time, Alejandra, and good luck on Friday. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.
We are now being joined by Usman Nurmagomedov. We'll begin with a few questions from the media. Keith Schillen, your line is now live. Usman, Privet Kakdila. It's Keith Schillen from Sherdog. Uh, my first question to you is, you know, the first time fighting in front of the U.S. fans, what kind of statement are you trying to make? Usman, привет, как дела? Это твой дебют в США. Что ты можешь сказать? Что с фанатом следует ожидать от твоего дебюта? Какое? Что ты? Как ты заявишь о себе в дебюте? Приветствую. Все хорошо. Фанатам даже не знаю. Нужно подождать. Пятницу вечером. Пятницу вечером покажу все на что сосвоен. Hello, I'm feeling great. I'm, uh, I'm excited to be here. And to the fans, I don't know even what to say. I just, uh, I just promise it will be a very entertaining fight, and you will see my statement inside the Bellator cage. Uh, Mike Hamill is your opponent. What do you think about him as your first opponent? How do you feel you match up? What do you want to say about your opponent? How do you feel about your opponent? How do you feel about your opponent? Well, he's a low, 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 low. А так ничего особенного. Не могу выделить в каких-то аспектах, что он сильнее меня, или в каких-то аспектах, что я слабее, чем он. В пятницу вечером покажу. So on Friday night, uh, we'll see. The only thing I can say, he's a little shorter than me. It will be a little discomfort for me. Well. Everything will be good for me. Donna? Hi, Usman. We've heard that, that uh, your cousin Khabib will be in the corner. Um, is there a lot of pressure coming into uh, your, your first fight in the States, obviously with, with such a, 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 huge, um, a huge legacy and a huge name to live up to? Мы знаем, что Хабиб будет у тебя в углу. Что ты можешь сказать? Это давит на тебя как-то? Ты нервничаешь? Или это, наоборот, тебя мотивирует и даст тебе, придаст больше сил? Я, скорее всего, для меня это мотивация, что такой человек у меня в углу. И я думаю, он будет мне подсказывать только правильные вещи, которые я должен буду делать. Конечно, So yeah, I'm sure uh, it will be will be very useful for me because he will do, he will give me uh, very useful tips during the fight. Uh, what is the feeling among the the Nurmagomedov family about the way that um of course your your cousin retired after his last fight for 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 a variety of reasons and his old rival Conor McGregor was was you know well able to maintain his uh, his trash talking what is the feeling in the Nurmagomedov family now that 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 chapter is over about uh, about Conor что того что ваша история история Нурмагомедовых с Конором закончилась мы поставили жирную точку We just finished with this, so that's all I can say. We're done. Tony? Hi, Usman. Um, we, we all probably thought that Habib would be the first Nurmagomedov to, to actually bring uh, an American promotion into, into Russia. Now that obviously he's, he's hung up the gloves, who, who do you feel will be, will be next best place to, to actually potentially open the door to either Bellator or, or the likes of the UFC into Russia? Tony, can you repeat that? Yeah, sorry. I, I just said we, we probably all thought that Khabib would be the first Nurmagomedov to actually bring a big US promotion to Russia. Um, now that he's hung up the gloves, who, who do you feel from the family will be able to, to actually open that door potentially? Uh, yes, of course, Khabib opened the door. Он спрашивает, если Хабиб открыл, привез UFC в Россию, что ты можешь сказать по этому поводу? И кто, кто думаешь, следующий приведет большой промоушен, американский промоушен в, в Россию? Какой-нибудь американский промоушен? А... Даже не знаю. Отлично, я перебил. Да. Ну, если, если мне выпадет такая часть, то... Было бы очень круто. Не знаю, я даже не знаю, что говорить. 
Кто, а, кто? А, а кто будет следующим? Но надеюсь, что Ислам будет. Uh, of course, Habib opened the door for UFC to, to come to Russia, and I believe it will be for a long time because uh, the next contender after uh, after Habib, I believe it will be our teammate Islam Mahachev. So UFC will be stick in Russia for I believe for a long time, and uh, of course I would be happy if I will get the opportunity to bring the Bellator to Russia as well. Gabriel. Usman, I know you've probably always trained with Habib, but has he changed since he's now become more of a coach and not just a training partner? Well, we know that you've long been training with Habib, but since he's now your trainer, has something changed in your preparation or are you also training together? Nothing special, just like he's just the main trainer. Nothing has changed, he was the main trainer then, and now he's the main trainer. И спарик партнер, и учитель, а, он, как сказать, то же самое, то, что было, она и сейчас есть, ничего не изменилось. Он был моим учителем, ничего не изменилось. Это вы, думаете, что он просто стал учителем, но он всегда был учителем в нашем команде. So nothing changed. He's still my sparring partner. He's still my trainer. He's still my coach. He's still, we still joke together. We still do everything together as we, we used to do. Nate? Uh, yes, sir. I just wanted to ask you, you've got a great stand-up game, and it's it's clear that you like uh, the Muay Thai style. And I was curious, uh, what is it that drew you to the stand-up game uh, over the dominant wrestling style that some people may come to have known for the Norm Norman Gamedov name? That the charge of the right of the team is that you're more of a attack. What can you say about that? Why are you more of a attack than the rest of your brothers in the fight? No. Не знаю, мне просто нравится стойки драться. Вот только поэтому. А так, э, если бороться, то у меня нет проблем и побороться. Окей. Okay, uh, honestly, I started with the Muay Thai and after I started training for wrestling. So, and also I like to strike more than to wrestle. But there is no problem for me to wrestle. You already know that I got the wrestling skills. But I want to also show that Nurmagomedov can also strike. We'll take a couple more here, Max. And in English, you are going to have your Bellator debut and you are a very active fight fighter. What are your expectations in your debut and in this new moment in your career? <laughs> дебют в Беллаторе, и ага. что, что ты можешь сказать, как ты, какое заявление ты поставишь о себе в своем дебюте, как ты заявишь о себе. Приветствую. Уже поздоровался, да? Да. А, но какое заявление оставлю о себе? Думаю, такое громкое заявление будет. Постараюсь сделать заявление громким. А так, а все, с заявлением Всевышнего, я заберу победу. Uh, hello. So I would like to put a big statement in my debut. In, it's my, it will be my Bellator debut as well as my US debut. So I will try to make a big statement to fans all over the world. And uh, God willing, I will get the victory and will fly safely home. Dylan. Hey there. I had a question in regards to just you know this big debut and it being on Showtime. I'm kind of wondering in terms of just MMA skills, what is Usman looking forward to showcasing to maybe a segment of the Bellator audience who's never seen him fight before? Uh, чтобы фанаты не зевали и увести победу с собой на родину. As I say, I would like to make a big statement in my debut fight, so I will get more, more, more fans from all over the world, especially in US and Bellator fans. And after that, God, God willing, I will get the victory. And as I said, I would like to go safely home. Last one here, Simon. 
Simon Romero, behind the grind. I have two questions for you. I just want to know, do you feel that uh, Khabib deserves Coach of the Year? У меня один вопрос, Илья. Ты думаешь, Хабиб заслужил э, награду как тренер года? Ну, спортсменом года он уже становился. Думаю, и тренером года тоже было бы неплохо. He already was the athlete of the year, so yeah, I believe he will get the coach of the year as well, because like he he corner for now he only cornered two of our teammates and two of them got the successful victories. And I will be the third, so we'll see. I believe all of our teammates will be. And this last one I have for you: Is there any extra pressure coming into your Bellator debut, being someone uh, people are continually talking about? Давит на на тебя вот это все внимание, то что у тебя дебют, люди говорят о тебе в твоем дебюте. Нет, совершенно нет. No, absolutely not. I'm confident and no no pressure at all. Я себя чувствую нормально. I feel very great and I'm excited to be here. Great. Thank you so much for the time, Usman. Appreciate it and good luck on Friday.
We are now being joined by Emmanuel Sanchez. Begin with a few questions from the media here. Keith Schillen, your line is now live. Hey, Emmanuel, it's Keith Schillen from SureDog. How you doing, man? Good, my friend. How about you? Excellent. Uh, so my first question I got to ask you is, there's three men left in this tournament, but it seems like all the talk are about A.J. McKee and Pitbull. Do you feel like you're being overlooked? Yeah, a little bit, but hate it or love it, the underdog's on top. So that's what I'm looking to go out and go do. Uh, they'll have that opportunity to see that, but only after I defeat both of them when this is when this Grand Prix is over. But first things first and last things last is I'm taking this whole Grand Prix. Yeah, uh, Bellator rankings came out this week. Obviously, Pitbull was number one in the division, but AJ was actually ranked above you. What's your thoughts on that? Eh, I kind of figured. I knew that was going to happen. Uh, I'm fighting... What I have ahead of me, the two best fighters in the world in this organization, because they have two accolades that I don't. One being a champ champ and who has a win over me and has been the greatest fighter in Bellator history, number one pound for pound. And then the other longest win streak, undefeated and look at what a star he's been in, uh, in Bellator. So you can't write a better story of me going out, avenging these losses that I had one, this man who had a win over me in 2018, and the other, I lost the opportunity to take that uh, undefeated record for him in 2016. So a lot of people forget about that, that we were scheduled to fight many years ago. But now I know I'm on this platform. A lot more is on the line, and I'm grateful for it all. Yeah, speaking of that, you said you mentioned that you fought Pitbull. It was a, it was a much closer fight than a lot of people will remember. What adjustments do you think you have to make this time so that your hand gets raised? Believing in my greatness. I believe that first time around, it was just uh, obviously showcasing skill, but toughness, heart, will. And uh, I was waiting and just thinking uh, just a little too much. Never hesitate. Go out there, trust in your instincts and uh, using my spider sense, being the matrix matador and capitalizing on my openings. So when I know I can go out there and uh, get the stoppage, make it happen. If not, uh, do whatever it takes to get my hand raised, continue to just keep the dog on the leash or fight him on the inside, fight him on the outside, fight him at my pace, my range, my rhythm. And again, another one down, another one eliminated and on to the final. Matthew. Hey, Emmanuel, this is Matthew Putterman from imamenus.com. How you doing, brother? Great, Matthew Putterman. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well, man. You know, my first question is to you, how does it feel to be the first main event fight on Showtime? I'm blessed. I'm grateful to God. It's, it's go time. It's show time. Uh, you can't write a better story uh, at this. Everyone's been waiting so long for uh, Bellator to get uh, get started this year. And yeah, first one of the year on uh, the Holy Week on Good Friday, man. So it's going to be a great Friday because he has risen and here we are. I get to turn my dreams into reality. You know, what's your biggest attribute as a fighter? Uh Having such a great supportive background with so many people in Rufus Sport, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, all and in, in, in Illinois and all throughout all over the world. But every fighter's got, you know, their their tribe and their people and their supporters, their lovers, their haters, criticizers, people who judge them, etc. But uh, I'm just grateful for everybody who is not counting me out but counting me in and knows that uh, that that I can do this. And they inspire me and motivate me, and I inspire and motivate and encourage them too, I, I hope. But uh, anyone who always helped believe you got to spread peace and love and akuna matata, man, and believe it in your greatness. So we're talking about a physical attribute and talk about gas tank. So my energy levels just never stop. And that's how I'll always be. And you can't stop. You can't stop. Won't stop. Max? Hola, soy Max Morales, MMA Pit. Hola, Manuel, ¿cómo estás? Eh, <ríe> mi, mi pregunta es que esa, esa última derrota que tienes es contra Patricio Pitbull y eso fue hace un poquito más de dos años y tres victorias después y, y después de estos dos años eh, es una revancha que tú tenías en mente y que estabas persiguiendo y qué esperas de esta pelea? Sí, claro, pues espero la victoria, primero gloria a Dios, pero uh, pues estoy muy agradecido que tengo esta oportunidad en esta plataforma, uh, en el Grand Prix, en ese estilo, este torneo que tenemos y pues estoy listo para, para vencerlo y al final. And let me uh, say it in English. <laughs> so my question was, um, your last uh, defeat was against Patricio Pitbull. 
and two years after that and three victories later. So that was a fight, a rematch that you were pursuing throughout these two years. And what, what are you expecting of this rematch? Nothing but greatness. It's going to be a great fight. I know he's going to come hard. He's going to want to come and get it. But I know I've learned the bow and arrow has got to be pulled back really far before it can be shot forward. And I'm excited to show him and the world on what he's taught me because he taught me a very valuable lesson. And praise God we're coming out with the victory. Thank you so much, Manuel. Gracias, hermano. All right, Nate. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so your path to success in your career was full of hardship. Uh, your Instagram Monday motivation post, which was awesome, by the way. Uh, you were sleeping outside the gym uh, in the Civic Coupe in the Honda. Uh, you're a very motivational guy. I just want to know how charged up are you to be back here for fight week with another shot at the title? <laughs> Very charged up, man. I can go back around that time, all those years ago. That's when I was watching Patricio Pitbull face Pat Curran in a rematch. And that's the, the still little humble blue-collar baller here trying to make his dreams come true, driving an hour plus to and from the gym every day, sleeping in his car, sleeping in the parking lot, sleeping in the gym floor. And now here we are. That's why I say it's me just turning my dreams into reality. All those, uh, all those third shifters out there, all those dishwashers out there, this one's for you because that's where I've been at and that's where I know I've been wanting to be, uh, being on this platform and going out and turning my dreams into reality, knowing that one day all that hard work, all that sacrifice, all that suffering was, was going to pay off. Like Muhammad Ali said, suffer now and live the rest of your life as a champion. And that's exactly what I'm going to go out and go do. Thank you, sir. Charged up, like I said. Good luck on Friday. Mm -hmm. Of course. Augusto? Wow, question and answer. Hey, hey, Manuel, do you hear me? Si, sí, claro. No, oh, it's excellent. Um, Emmanuel, obviously you, you have already faced on, on 2018 and since then you're in a three fight winning streak facing tough competitors. So I want to ask you, what have you learned and improved during these two and a half years? And what are we going to see on this Matador Sanchez that, that's different from the one of the, the, the first fight? Definitely more of the Matrix Matador and using his spider sense here, <laughs> trusting and believing in his greatness never hesitating, and I've upped my strength. Uh, I've upped my cardio. Some people think like, wow, how can you get even better cardio? Uh, you can. So in every area outside of MMA as well too, you have to stay sharp mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. As a, as a fighter, it takes a lot to get in there on any level. And I'm looking forward to showing him and the world on what he's taught me and how much I've grown in every which way. And I'm a, a lot more wiser now because of that loss. Damon Martin. Emmanuel, uh, kind of a two-part question. When you look back at that first fight with Pitbull, uh, obviously it's several years ago, but, but kind of from your perspective, what's the biggest thing you learned about him in that fight? And what's the biggest thing you learned about yourself in that fight? That I can take his best shots that I, I can handle his, his pressure, his, his speed, his ferocity, his tenacity. And now I know that I can really overwhelm him with mine. And of course he's grown. Of course he's rewatched our fight and uh, rewatched my old fights recently. And obviously we, it's like uh, just two lions staring across from a, a watering hole. Uh, go, right into, we knowing that we're gonna cross paths again. I'm sure after this, after I defeat him, I know we will, we will meet again, but First things first is going to go out and show what he taught me in 2018. And I'm a much wiser fighter because of that. I'm a much stronger fighter. And whatever doesn't kill you just makes you stronger and smarter. So I've had to learn from that. As painful as it was and as difficult as it was, I was, I was motivated by him. He went out to, to defeat Michael Chandler and he became the champ champ. And he's been dominant and showed nothing but dominance ever since. So I'm excited. I'm fighting the best pound for pound fighter, the best champion Bellator's ever had. And I'm looking to go out and be on top. Last one for me, you know, when you look at Pitbull, since you fought him, he's obviously, as you mentioned, gone on to do some great things. The Chandler win, you know, Juan Archuleta, the things he's done. But do you feel like he's that much different of a fighter than the guy you fought a few years ago? Yes and no. I'll say Yes, because of course he had to evolve and he had to obviously get bigger, get stronger, get more explosive, et cetera, everything they needed to do, knowing that he was going to move a weight class up. And who knows what, he, what his plans were outside of that and what if, 
we had no idea prior to what was going to go on with this Grand Prix. But then when this Grand Prix got started, uh, I feel like his level of opponents, uh, all great fighters, but they didn't really force him to change his game too much in, in the sense that the way what I bring to the table. So as great of a fighter he is, and those other great fighters as well too, uh, had the potential to beat him in maybe their ways and their thoughts and what their game plans, but they just didn't have the style to beat him. And I know I have the, the style and the ferocity and the gas tank to, to get my hand raised over him. Giancarlo? Hi, Manuel. Hope you're doing well. Uh, just one question for me. Uh, in terms of preparation for this fight, uh, do you find it more challenging uh, thinking, like, do you overthink things uh, because of the last fight, or do you find it more calming knowing that you've already shared the cage with him? I find it more calming because I've also been cage side for his last three fights, getting uh, that win over Michael Chandler, the win over Juan Archuleta, and recently the win over Pedro Carvalho. So uh, I still see those holes and those gaps and those openings to where I know I can capitalize on and also need to watch out for so he doesn't leave my face a bloody mess. Uh, he taught me a very valuable lesson. And I, I know that me believing in my greatness and me growing and learning, uh, watching him in each of those bouts, and me learning and growing from each of my bouts as well, too, leading up to this moment uh, has what's propelled me and enabled me to evolve me to say that I can say what I'm saying right now. And I'm staying calm all the way through. I know what this man brings to the table. I know I'm fighting the best pound for pound fighter, the best Bellator champion in history. But I do also know that I can defeat him and I have the potential to beat, defeat him and I will defeat him. And that's exactly what I'm looking to go out and go do and turning my dreams into reality and onto the final. Santiago? Hola, Emmanuel. Greetings from Amsterdam, and thank you for the time. Greetings, my friend. Cheers. There are some big weeks coming up for Rufus Sport with three massive fight in, fights in just over four weeks. Could you share how the vibes are at the gym and what makes this gym so special, according to you? Uh, man, it's like the Bulls dynasty. That's how I feel. 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96. I'm just going out to to kill the game and all, every single one of us looking out to be world champions. And it starts with me. I'm excited to start the year off. He go in a few weeks, a uh, little after me. Then we got Sergio Pettis going in fighting for a world title. Uh, my other teammate, Anthony Pettis, his brother, you know, is in a, a world grand prix tournament style. Other teammate, Laura Sanchez is in a world grand prix tournament style. And outside of them as well, too, I have my teammate, Jordan Newman fighting on this card with me. Like how we started uh, years ago as well, too, when I had my first, or second main event uh, about and uh, Rafael Stotts fighting the same card as uh, Sergio Pettis on May 7th. So it's it's the winning season. Uh, we had our drought. We had our rough time. Our, our, our fights were canceled. Our, the gym was closed down. Wisconsin was just going just a ruckus. It was everything was it was was craziness. But we, we never lost hope. We never gave up. We stayed faithful. We stayed hungry. And now here we are. The whole team's ready to eat. And we're ready to leave a big legendary thing going on for the team and each of us as fighters as well too for our careers and our lives. That is beautiful. Last one for me, Emmanuel. Your cardio is absolutely spectacular. In your last fight against Daniel Weichel, you weren't even breathing heavy in the in the fifth round. Is that cardio coming from your Mexican roots? And how much would it mean to you, Emmanuel, if you could show the Mexican people that Bellator MMA belt? I mean, uh, the best ever, the first Mexican uh, Bellator featherweight champion there's has been. Uh, you cannot write a better story, especially going into someone who has a victory over him being on this platform, on this format. I love it. Uh, it, it just makes it that much better and that much sweeter than it was years ago. And uh, I'm, I'm so excited to, to go out and show what uh, Patricio Pitbull has taught me and the wisdom and, and knowledge that I've gained from not only that fight, but also me wanting to stop Daniel Weichel. Didn't get my, my the stoppage how I wanted, uh, but I got to showcase a lot of other tools and weapons and, like you said, a nonstop gas tank. So, yeah, that comes straight from la, the corazón, pura raza mexicana, and through the Mexican power, just nonstop. Since I was a kid, I've always seen my parents work three, four, five jobs. It's a nonstop hustle, and that's all I've ever known. That's all I, uh, that's all I can do. I just I can't stop. I won't stop, and I can't be stopped, and I won't be stopped. So I'm just uh, MMA's energizer bunny, man. <laughs> I, uh, I want to just keep going. And whatever it takes to get my hand raised, whatever it takes to get the stoppage and to go out and be victorious. That's exactly what I'm going to go out and do this Friday night. All right, we'll take a couple more here. Dana? 
Uh, hi, Emmanuel. You talked about the upcoming schedule for Rufus Sport Fighters. You missed out the boxing match that your teammate Ben Askren is going to be having in a couple of weeks. How, did, how could you possibly forget? Uh, Ben's doing his own Rocky style training. I don't know if you've been watching his videos out there, so I'm letting him be Rocky going out there with his own Mickey and his own peeps out there. Uh, I haven't had the opportunity to spar with Ben or work with Ben that much, but our other coaches have. Uh, he's also been going to Freddie Roach's gym and other, uh, other big gyms and he's getting the work that he needs to, for himself, uh, to, to make this happen. But I'm excited, man. Uh, I can't wait for him to go out there and uh, prove to the world that even him as an MMA fighter who wasn't uh, that great or that dominant with his striking skill can still go out and shut up this big mouth over here who thinks he has striking skill over an MMA fighter. Uh, talk to me a bit about your faith. You mentioned uh, before that you were sleeping in your car. You were uh, really uh, struggling on your way to, to get to this point to be fighting for the, the world championship. At any point... Did your faith wane? Did you think, God, what are you doing here? Uh, talk to me a bit about about that and how you kept, uh, how you how you maintained your faith through all of that. Oh, that's a great question. I almost want to tear up now thinking about it, man, because it takes me back to those days where I do remember uh, working uh, eleven hours straight and then needing to go to the gym and just having a five shot americano and just taking a quick five minute nap before I needed to drive to the gym and get ready for, you know, uh, the next fight or just training, even without a fight on the line, just knowing that I, I couldn't miss out on training because I, I want to get to this level. I wanted to be where I'm at. No sacrifice, no victory. And throughout that whole time, I said, just God, please just give me strength. Uh, that, that's all I pray for. And I just pray that I don't fall asleep on the road and have a car accident or anything like that. And, he, he is faithful. He is worthy. And I, I give all the, the glory and honor to God because he has kept me safe throughout this whole time. MMA is such a dangerous sport, but on top of that, needing to make the, 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 the ability to make it happen through training, through uh, trying to get sponsorships, through trying to get fights, through just keeping your health, through trying to balance your job on top of pursuing the dream of being a professional MMA fighter and being a world champion. I, I just, I just never lost hope. I just never gave up. And I just prayed every single second that I, that I had with any little injury or going broke or sleeping in my car, or sleeping on an air mattress or whatever it was that I was going through. I just knew I was like, it's trying to teach me something. He is trying to teach me something. And no matter what, I know the, the risk the, the pain, it, it will be worth it in the end. And I'll, I'm here on this platform now being able to share that with you and everyone in this room and everyone in the world watching that with God, all things are possible and just never give up. Believe in your greatness and with God, all things are possible, man. Just trust. Steven, how many shots of espresso in your, are in your Americana these days? Uh, I, I got to tone it down, man. This is why... Uh, this is for all the haters out there. People think Bellator fighters, oh man, everyone's out there, they're all roided up. The only thing you'll find in me is Mexican steroids, beans and rice. And the only things I go overboard with is, uh, yeah, coffee and sugar. But I got to limit that too, because unfortunately I have diabetes that runs in my family. And yeah, two drugs that I know for sure, caffeine and sugar that I got to watch out. But no, not too many shots, just a, 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 just a plain dark roast with a little bit of, you know, raw sugar or some hazelnut, some, some good roast. Starbucks, man, it always just whatever. Or Mexican-style cafe. De Oye. I, I don't hate. I'm, I'm excited to try all kinds of coffees. Fighting in Israel, the first time I lost to Patricio, they had some great coffee while I was out there, too. And every now and then, I'll enjoy myself a, a Celsius or a nice energy drink, a Zevia energy drink. I hope Zevia gets this and hooks me up with the endorsement like they do Mighty Mouse or Nate Diaz. But I've been trying. Zevia, they're, they're the best. They're, they're saviors from right there. Or green tea ginseng and green tea but i gotta tone it down i'm naturally energized right now i don't know if you can tell i'm cutting away i only have a few more pounds to go but i still can just be non-stop right here and talk your ear off for days but i'm I'm ready to fight now man but i'm excited but this morning i did add one shot of espresso just to help the weight go down okay um so i wanted to expand a little bit on something that uh you were talking about earlier about uh askren um, can you remember a time, uh, a specific time in which you were striking with him or working on striking in 
in which you kind of underestimated his abilities and or maybe he surprised you in some way or did something that maybe you wouldn't have expected him to do? Well, I never underestimated him. Uh, I never underestimated anybody ever, no matter who they're from or I have visitors and, you know, come from out of state, out of town, out of the country uh, who have come into my beautiful Rufus Sport MMA Academy. There was one time I had five different English uh, accents, Australian, Irish, uh, German, or not German, but uh, uh, New Zealand. I had so many different guys that were in there at the time. But the first time I remember sparring with Ben Askren, he threw a spinning backfist at me. And I was like, what the? I thought for sure. I'm like, okay, I'm just getting ready for Ben to try to, okay, move around with me, but try to take me down. Because also, I was, I'm way smaller than he is. But he threw a spinning backfist at me and was striking a little more than I expected. A lot of times uh, you think you know you're going to go with someone who's predominantly a wrestler or just wants to grapple you. They're probably just going to try to walk at you or grab a hold of you to just lock horns with you and take you down. But, yeah, I was pretty surprised Ben Askren was throwing spinning uh, back fists at me and other jumping kick attacks. And uh, I wanted to show him that I didn't, uh, you know, I, he has my respect and he was my coach at the time, but I didn't care. Uh, I tried to take him down and he threw me like on my head like I was a little kid. But that was all good. I, I went and showed that this it was MMA training. Uh, and no matter what or who it is that I'm moving around with, uh, over all these years, who I'm striking with, who I'm grappling with, MMA, jiu-jitsu, wrestling, whatever it may be, uh, I'm always looking to obviously dominate and get, I don't want to say the better of the round, but you get what I'm saying. Like, show where my skill is at and learn and grow from that as well, too. And I, you have to, otherwise you're not going to get better. Did you watch the press conference between them? I did, and I think that guy's a punk. Uh, I think we should not make stupid people famous. I, I don't even know why he's considered famous. I don't know who he is unless other people have, have told me. But uh, I think people have uh, that, that title or that label of famous misconstrued. Um, someone famous to me would be like Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King on here, uh, Cesar Chavez, Rosa Parks. People have done great things, the great Muhammad Ali. You know, uh, people have done great things in uh, many different aspects in their lives. And what do we have here? Uh, from what I know, just a YouTuber who's boxed a, a basketball player and another YouTuber. And it, it, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. You got funny videos on YouTube and you make money off of it and, or Instagram, too, or whatever. Uh, God bless you. If you can do that and make a lot of money or have a lot of notoriety and endorsements and great all that, I, I'm, I'm happy for you. But I don't think that he is anyone to be idolized or praised. Uh, nor with Ben Askren, so I don't feel that way towards anyone. But uh, Ben, I feel, should have a little more uh, respect for what he's done and for who he's needed to face and what he's needed to go through in order to be in the position to where he is now, being able to not only get paid for, for this and being on this platform that he's, that he's on, but uh, that guy just seems a little bit like a punk to me. And uh, Ben is a true competitor and a true fighter. Uh, people are counting Ben out. I don't know why, but Ben's a true fighter whether it be boxing, wrestling, jujitsu, grappling, if it's a spitting contest, whatever it would be, Ben would show up and show you what's up. So that's that's what a fighter does. Last question here, Tony. Emmanuel, hope, hope you're well. Um, you, you got to avenge a loss in your, your last fight. How much did you learn from going into that fight as, as a rematch that you're going to be bringing into this fight on, on Friday? <sighs> Obviously, his strengths, his speed, uh, his stamina, his endurance, his everything, and my own. Uh, that was my first five-round fight. That was my first international fight. Uh, a lot was riding and going into that. I, I had a lot of, I feel like, maybe almost put too much pressure on myself being out there the first time flying that far across the world to, to be able to fight and fighting such a great champion and such a dominant fighter who's shown nothing but greatness throughout uh, his Bellator career. And... Now I know, I, I believe in my greatness. I showed my potential. I showed what I, I could do, but now it's time to really fully unleash and let it all out in there to do whatever it takes to get the stoppage or uh, five rounds of making sure that complete dominance that I get my hand raised. All right, Manny, thanks for the time today and good luck on Friday. Peace and love and kuna matata to all you guys. Thank you. God bless.
All right, we are now being joined by Patricio Pitbull. Keith Schillen, your line is now live. Hey, Pitbull, it's Keith Schillen, the Dog. How you doing, man? Mr. Bay, what's that? I'm good. How about you? Uh, excellent. Thanks for asking. Uh, I want to bring up a couple of weeks ago, you got into it with uh, the owner of Tapology based on the rankings. You were really low on, on the rankings. What do you think you have to do to get more respect in the rankings? Eu só falei a minha opinião, eu acho que é uma, uma grande merda, não tem, faz sentido algum. Todo mundo tem agora o Michael Chandler acima de mim e ele, ele foi nocauteado em pouco tempo. Então, <laughs> para mim, Hank é um bullshit grande. For me, the, those ratings are number one bullshit. I, I, I wasn't actually really angry, I was just, just giving my opinion that it's kind of, it's kind of bullshit that you guys got Michael Chandler fighting for the UFC title yet. Just a few, a couple, uh, a few months ago, I knocked him out in under a minute. And I mean, if the second win in this fighter in Bellator is going over to the UFC and fighting for a title, how are you going to have? It's absurd to have him, the person who knocked him out, ranked at 21. What changed? What changed? There was only one fight in the UFC against uh, a city kickboxer. What changed? to make him, uh, the to, to make such a big difference or a separation between himself and him and Chandler. Yeah, uh, and to build off that Chandler that you just mentioned, if he wins the title, what do you think that says for not only you, but the entire Bellator roster is that he's a longtime Bellator guy that would now be the champion in another organization? Si él gana, o okay, que eso significa, si él gana el título de UFC, porque él... Significa que o UFC va a tener que engolir, que él tiene un lutador inferior al campeón de Bellator, de la categoría de abajo. Uh, it means that the UFC is going to have to suck it up, that they got the second best lightweight in the world, who lost to a guy that was coming up for, uh, from a smaller weight class. They're going to have to realize that the, the pound for pound best fighter is not in the UFC, he's in Bellator. And his name is Patricio Pitbull. Here you go ahead. <laughs> hey, Patricio. Harry Mack from the Bookie's Basement. So I just wanted to ask you, uh, you've been the betting favorite in, for four straight fights in Vegas. Uh, going back to the Michael Chandler fight was the last time that you were an underdog, actually. So I just wanted to ask, is that something that you just kind of get used to? Or uh, is being expected to come out on top every time something that kind of adds a little more pressure to your fights? Você sempre era o favorito nos últimos quatro lutas. Você está acostumado com isso? Não, não presta atenção nisso. Não ligo para isso. Presta no meu adversário. Isso para mim de favorito e zebra não faz, não, não, não atrai minha atenção. Yeah, I don't even pay attention to that. I just to pay attention to who is in front of me and the strategies, strategies and tactics I need to execute to beat them. James, go ahead. Hey guys, this is James here from Strictly MMA. Just one question for you. Um, Emmanuel was in here earlier. He was on a, a he's on a three fight win streak now since the last time you guys met in the cage. He says he feels he's grown as a fighter. He's made the adjustments. He's changed up his game. From what you guys have seen, do you feel you're going to be dealing with a whole different kind of an Emmanuel come Friday night? Falou que Emmanuel falou que ele mudou muito. Você acha que ele é o mesmo ou você vai enfrentar um cara novo, diferente? Não subestimo ele, sei que ele pode trazer uma guerra. Ele é muito dinâmico, traz uma pressão muito forte. Uma das lutas mais duras que eu tive, mas ele não evoluiu tecnicamente. Ele pode ter ficado mais forte mentalmente, mas tecnicamente ele é o mesmo lutador. I haven't, so, I haven't underestimated him. Uh, Emmanuel Sanchez has given me one of the toughest fights. He he's very dynamic, he brings a lot of of pressure. Um, he probably has gotten better mentally, but technically he's still the same fighter. But the results will, still, will also still be the same, and this time I plan to finish him. Augusto? Hey, Patricio. Hey, Eric. How are you? Good, my friend. How hey. are you? I, I want to ask you two questions, Patricio. First one, well, you have already said that, that you, all, you will finish him. 
And on your first bout, you were close, but you couldn't. So what do you think was missing that time? And what have you been working to make it happen this time? And my second question is, uh, I, I want to know if you are going to be watching Michael Chandler's fight on, on May the 15th or, or you don't care. Thank you. Ah, porque você não nocautia, quase nocautiou, mas não consegui nocautiar. Ela é última luta, porque você mudou para conseguir nocautiar. Ah, sim, sim. Ele é mais paciência. Paciência é a resposta. E se você vai assistir a luta de Michael Chandler? Claro, ele é o representante do Mero 1 UFC, claro que você. Yes, he's he's the number one representative of the. Ah, uh, yes, of course I'm gonna represent. I mean, excuse me. Yes, of course I'm gonna watch the fight. Michael Chan is the number one representative of, of Patricia Pitbull right now. Damon, go ahead. Hey, Eric and uh, Patricio, uh, let me start with this one. I know your focus is Emmanuel Sanchez, but I do want to get your thoughts on AJ McKee in the finals. And, and, and where, where do these two, you know, these two wins potentially put you in terms of your career? You've already accomplished a lot, but what would it mean to beat Emmanuel and AJ in back-to-back -back fights? Okay, by significance, if you say about Emmanuel Sanchez, he won Victor, AJ McKee, consecutive, and then he'll teach a little. Compra Victor Mundial Salva, so number one. It's going to prove what everybody already knows, that I'm number one. And, and last one, uh, we've seen Bellator has added a lot of talent to the roster lately, especially with the light heavyweight Grand Prix. Uh, is there any part of you that, that, that hopes that Bellator starts pursuing more, you know, free agent featherweights and lightweights to challenge you to kind of bring some new, new talent into the divisions as, as you are the double champ? Oh, Bellator has a lot of people to the torneo de meio pesados, você tá querendo que Bellator leva mais tá, caras talentos nas suas categorias? Eu já matei quatro ou cinco gerações do, do peso pena e, e arranquei a cabeça do melhor peso leve de, de todos do, da história do Bellator e não me importa é, com mais caras, quantos mais caras eles vão adicionar, vou bater em todos. I be, I've already beaten four to five generations of uh, Bellator's best fighters. I went up a weight class and took off the head of the greatest lightweight in history. None of, uh, really doesn't matter who they bring in. Uh, I'll beat them all. Jim, go ahead. Hey, Jim Barcelona, Miami Herald, a coach and Pitbull. Just curious, what does Pitbull think of the format of the Grand Prix and how exciting is it to have this type of Situation tournament in Bellator. Ah, o que você acha de um torneio que você está dentro do Grand Prix e fala sobre assim como você gosta de torneios? É a prova de fogo, né? Eu sou campeão. Poderia ter escolhido ficar de fora e enfrentar apenas o o desafiado, mas já eu coloquei minha minha cabeça em Botei meu central em jogo em todas as rendas que eu estou entrando, né? todo mundo que aceita fazer isso. É, sou uma vida de desafio, eu acho que foi o mais interessante para mim foi isso, é muito bom. Poder estar tá na, na posição de privilégio, mesmo assim me colocar em uma situação de perigo. The tournaments you get to be, these guys get baptized by fire. Uh, it's a true, re you get the true representative uh, of the weight class when they become champion. I've won a, uh, a couple of these tournaments, and uh, hopefully now. Oh, yes. And um, I was in a privileged position as the world champion, but my, I put myself in danger, and I put myself into the tournament. I'm the only person in this tournament that has prepared for five rounds for every fight, every single fight. Um, and I chose that. Uh, to be put in that position. And lastly, Coach Eric, and obviously with weight and all, that's always a thing with fighters and everything, but if there was anybody that could hold three belts, is Pitbull the one? Well, I, I consider Pitbull to being the pound for pound, the best fighter on the planet, uh, most complete, uh, black belt in striking, black belt in wrestling, black belt on the ground, 
uh, he's proven uh, by taking off uh, the Michael Chandler. He put he took off his head in a minute. So, I mean, I think uh, what's the last part of your question, Jim? Hello? Did I miss him? What was the last part of his question? Can you repeat that last part? Okay, here we go. It was unmute. I was muted. Yeah, just the part that if there was anyone out there that could hold three belts, Pitbull right. could be the one. Right. So from, from pound to pound, I mean, at 145 and 155, all it would take was the, would be really the diet because he's the only one that's, ever, that's beaten Juan Archuleta, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, at least in Bellator, and Juan Archuleta is the champ at 135, and he dominated him at 145. And to tell you the truth, if you put Juan Archuleta next to uh, Patricio, he's bigger than him. So uh, Juan Archuleta is bigger than Patricio Pitbull. So I, I uh, does that, you know this, Jim. Jim, you know this, Jim Barcelona. I've known you since high school. You know I'm into winning titles, triple titles. Three championships. If anybody yes. can do it, trust me, it's Patricia Pitbull. Yes, thank you, Eric. Put up, put up, put the, put up the two champ champs, triple champs against anybody. All right, Max. Uh, hi, I'm Max Morales from MMA Pit. Hi, Eric. Hi, Patricia. So almost five years as undefeated. Now you are the champ champ. Fighters come up with different game plans to go against you. So how how have been how have been this this run for you, and how different do you expect this part two with Emmanuel Woodgo? Você era campeão por cinco anos. Como isso você esperava isso que quando no início de sua carreira que você vai durar como campeão para tão longo e Como vai ser diferente essa luta? Sim, eu, pro... Sim, eu programei minha vida para isso. E dessa vez eu, eu vou terminar a luta. Yeah, I trained my whole life for this. I programmed myself to put myself in this position. And this time against Emmanuel Sanchez, I'm going to finish the fight. And the second question, you've been very vocal about your victory against Michael Chandler. So. What do you have to say about the, the now uh, challenger for that belt? Okay, but I think you fell out so the channel can't tell you down the title of Mundial, not the UFC. Ele vai lá, vai ser campeão do UFC e vai ser meu representante número um. Vai mostrar minha força. He's gonna go, he's gonna go into that fight, become the UFC world champ, and become Patricio Pitbull's number one representative, showing his strength. All right, guys, thanks for the time. Good luck on Friday. Thank you. Where was uh, Don?